Hello, hello. All my cozy folks, how are you all doing? Hey there, Wet Lotus. Thanks for 16 months of wonderful support. Spooky Monster with 15 months of wonderful support and the good luck wishes. Hello and welcome to That's Bunny. Hey there, Snakebird Priestess. Godcha, the Dirty Dirk, some Amir, French Fry Apocalypse. So going arc procession reached a 13 with ironclad but cannot seem to find a way to not die even if you tend to make your deck defensive uh, others in chat are suggesting this but you may need a, a fundamental shakeup in how you're thinking about uh, ironclad especially uh, so have you tried blocking less the Ironclad is really good at uh, mostly one thing, and that one thing is bonk. Bonk the enemy with a big stick and deal quite a bit of damage. Uh, there's a lot of early game cards you can get that slap pretty hard right from floor one. Perfected Strike. Um, Twin Strike is actually pretty good. Carnage hits nice and hard. Hemokinesis is really good damage for the value. And of course, there's ways to increase the damage of your attacks, like in Flame and other such things. Um, combined with Ironclad's Starter Relic, the Burning Blood Healing 6 at the end of combat, it's often quite easy to get through combats by attacking the enemy as hard as you can, tanking the first hit that they swing at you, and then killing them on turn 2 or turn 3. Isn't Inflame really bad, though? I'd say Inflame is a very good find, at least in Act 1. I'm usually... I, I've increasingly become very happy with Inflame for just a consistent boost to uh, my attacks. Yeah, the Goku Strat. Just have you tried hitting them really hard? Quirky Quillfish says, I'm making a mod with a defect-like character and I replace the starting dual cast with my version of Fission, removing orbs for the card draw, but I'm noticing that it really lacks front-loaded damage, making Act 1 rough. Any suggestions? Hmm. I think you have two, two good routes uh, with regards to... If you're, if you're talking about making the character on a fundamental level here, the, the overall design then you, you have the starting deck and you have the starting relic. And that's kind of all that you get to work with. So I, I think that your answer has to come from either the relic or the other starting card. You could change Zap to something that's better at front-loaded damage. Um, or you could change the relic to something that helps with specifically early encounters. Uh, although ideally also keeping the flavor of the character. I'm not quite sure what that would look like. But I think that's where I would look, at least. David's 2 actually killed the heart at least once. Thanks for five months. Have I spent much time on any MMOs? I think many of us have had an, an MMO period. Whether we're still in it or not uh, is different for each person. For me, the MMO that I put a lot of time into was called City of Heroes, which was a, a superhero MMO, basically. Uh, you for each, each character is their own superhero. You team up with other superhero characters to take down supervillains. Um, the, that MMO ended up taken down, like, off the internet, um, after a number of years of operation, uh, and then recently got a revival in the form of, uh, private servers. Actually, some, some fun drama with City of Heroes, specifically, uh, and the, the private servers thereof, but, uh, it's open to the public now, 
So it's it's cool that there are still people to this day playing City of Heroes, the the first and I still think greatest uh, superhero MMO. That was a really fun game to uh, to theory crap for. I got I got really into uh, City of Heroes to the point that I I did things like um, trade the character limit of money, like the, the maximum amount of money that one character can hold. Trade that for a singular enhancement to, to min-max a build on a character I was making. Aaron W. says, when you defeat the Act 3 boss without having all the keys... Is the is the large number at the end your total score of every run that you've done? If so, what do you think your score is? Yes, the game totals the score uh, of all your runs up to that point. However, I discovered that the game has a limit to this number, and it will not display values beyond 1 million. So the number the game displays for me is always something like 999,000 some some other thing. If I were to suspect the actual sum total of my runs, I have to be in the 5 million plus point at this point. I feel like I hit that cap a long time ago, and I've exceeded it long since. So that's my guess, is somewhere in the 5 million range. How's it going, DJ Dragonflame? Slabs Man, thanks for the 13 months. Big number good. Hey there, Blue Chew. Thousand runs puts you at two and a half mil. And yeah, I've done, I've probably done 2,000 runs. We got 400 wins, 600 total runs in one year. We've been doing this for about five years, so. Yeah, two to three thousand runs. Hey there, the noob plays. Oh, actually, that reminds me. Uh, one of the winners, for, another one of the winners from our clip contest, decided to donate their prize to chat in the form of gifted subs. So I have three more gifted subs to give out here at the start of stream. Let me do that right now. Good luck, everyone. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club, Pike Stanton, Goat Goat, and Pokey PDX. Those are those three gifted subs are courtesy of Camel Crushed for donating their uh fourth place prize. Mercilesses, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Now run it back. The Helix goodness continues. We got another Helix run yesterday. Although we had two in a row without Helix. Three in a row without Helix. Two in a row with Busted Crown was kind of fun. Will the Busted Crown win streak continue? Is the question before us here. Storm, did I miss your pre-roll sub? My bad. Let me see here. I scrolled past it, but... Storm, thank you for the 53 months of sub ports. More than five metric years at this point. That's a crazy long time. And Tired Axolotl, thanks for the Prime sub. Zwen, thank you so much for three months 
Zwang Zigcent. There we go. Thank you so much for three months of support. Laga Laga Log with 10 months, the metric years. Server holds 1,597 save files for the main profile. Yeah, and that's just since we started tracking. Uh, October Blue, thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Happy Friday, Dr. Noodles. And happy Friday to the Ironclad. Greetings, choose. I think this one's a scam. I think 14 max health might be a scam. Especially against Hexagos, it's a scam. In theory, it gives you a leg up in hit points. In practice, the downside often not worth the upside you're getting. We have been talking about Hexaghost means boss swap. Although there is a forced early elite here. That is a little, little bit uncomfortable. Only one. Max of two elites here. Not a very easy looking act overall. Not a very rewarding looking act overall, perhaps I should say, which makes me want to boss swap all the more because it seems we're getting a maximum of two fires and two elites, which is frankly pathetic. Enrique K says, how strong it is to trade health for a good reward at Niao shows inversely how bad it is to receive health at Niao. Yeah, surely if it's if it's good to trade seven max health for 250 gold, then it's probably not that good to trade your gold for more max health, right? I wouldn't say that's strictly true, in in part because the max health here does equate to instant current health which is not true of losing max health at the start of a run. Have I heard of the comic Mr. Zed? I have not. I think I'm in a boss swap in this situation. It does present potentially a bit of a challenge for this first elite, but I feel like Ironclad can probably prevail. So what do we get from the boss swap? The Blessed Sneko continues to rain its blessings upon Clad here. I feel like five or six of our last 20 Clad boss swaps have been Sneko eye. Although I wouldn't say that Sneko eye is a particularly good starting relic in terms of floor one. Uh, as soon as we can find a couple of decent cards, things that would normally cost two or more, uh, it'll really start to shine. And Binusaid giving their bits for Lord Snack. I'm going to take these two fights, see what we get here. See how many hit points we lose to the opening combats. With the Snack OI, we draw seven cards per turn, but they're all random cost meaning that uh, what we play is not entirely up to us most turns. It's trading one form of consistency for another is how I like to look at it. Because you're drawing more cards per turn, it takes you fewer turns to get to the bottom of your draw pile, and you are more likely to see any particular card on any given turn. But because the costs are random, you can't always be assured that you're going to be allowed to play the cards that you draw. So you're trading draw consistency, which is going up, for energy consistency, which is going down. Definitely play this, and I think instead of striking them both, I defend one more time. I think so. Take only four here. I do double attack again. Hmm. No, that got punished. 
Although, not really, actually, because we'd still be taking a big hit. Even if I'd struck them both. So let's just block again. Neither will attack us this turn. And we can hopefully hit them both at least one time. It's not going well. Yeah, if I play the strike, I can no longer play any defense. This is not going well. Does that go? Oh yeah, because it's... <laughs> that's That would explain what's going wrong here. I like to call this the Sneko tax. It, fully expected by me. I'm, I'm not sure if this is real or just some kind of imagined observation, but it feels to me like immediately after acquiring the Sneko, basically no matter when you acquire it, you're going to get some really crappy draws um, that will make you hate your life. But if you get past that initial payment of life, then things will start to work out wonderfully. So we pay part of this Neko tax. I, I don't expect that to be the full tax. Taking the True Grit, by the way. Combust not too bad, but I don't like it without healing. I'll take the block card. And we'll get involved with a Jawworm. No, I see the Neko tax is not quite finished. Uh, we can double defend. Double defend strike is just fine. Okay, going well enough. Going very well. All right, good. We play this, and I guess I play this. All right, you are out of here, is that correct? Yes. Okay, not too bad from the Jawworm. We score a Strength Potion, making an Elite a lot more reasonable. And our choice of Evolve, Uppercut, Battle Trance. As tempting as Battle Trance would have been normally with the Snekoi, it's a lot less good. Uppercut looks fantastic. 13 damage and both weak and vuln is a very, very useful. A premium Sneko card, indeed. This is a card that's made of card. Basically, with the Sneko Eye, because costs are random, you just want to evaluate each card based on the text it has, ignoring the cost. So looking at the, the full output of the card is its only effect. Is, uh, I think the best way to evaluate them. And by those standards, Uppercut easily trounces the other two here. I fight this elite, I'm going to this shop. That makes me not want this shop unless I absolutely need it to get through the first elite. And because we already have a strength potion and, and an uppercut, I think we're good to now take this green path. Something like that. We get to upgrade uppercut here. Or maybe carnage if we find one or something. We fight this elite, get a relic, fight another elite... We have to make these 50 hit points last all through that, so we've got to be a little careful here. I think with the potion we'll be just fine. Yeah, see a 2 plus cost card, take a 2 plus cost card. And now we're going to start to see the benefits of the Snack OI as we get to take turns that are uppercut, strike, strike, which a normal ironclad would not be able to do. And yeah, we get bash, strike, strike as well, killing cultists cleanly in two turns. A good sign. Get another attack, another potion, an attack potion. And Pommel Strike isn't amazing, but right now, this early in the run, it's good enough. Certainly, you don't take anger with a Sneko Eye. Do not recommend. Like adding a strike, but worse. Do we ever go for the Burning Elite here? Presumably, we could handle the Burning Elite. That would mean not getting a shop this act. But it would mean getting the green key out of the way. I think with a Sneko swap, we don't need to be compelled to do, uh, to go for an early Burning Elite. I think I'd rather look at that shop. Falling Snow, thanks for the two months in the Prime sub. And Oiski, thanks for three years of support.
I was a little concerned about health. We could just go to full hit points here. To make sure that this is a, a safe journey to Hexaghost. But since we're fighting Hexaghost, and for the long run, it's definitely a little bit better to take the max health. Hmm. I think having 55 health in these potions ought to be enough. Let's take that donut. Okay, a lousy set of opponents, but not too bad. We can uppercut one to kill. And then I can true grit block for seven. That still means taking seven, though. Can't play any other cards. We could consider attack potion here, although I think it's better used in the elite fight. Let's just take seven. Double attacking me again, huh? But I think I can kill one. 26, 27. Kill the... Here, attack one. Yeah, I can just kill you. And then we full block. This one won't attack next turn. We can just punch it. Then kill it. Okay, that was clean. Offer to disarm. Remember, we're fighting Hexaghost. This is definitely a card that's worth paying random costs for with Snekoi. Really good to have one of these going into Heart, which is a long way away, but still worth thinking about even here on Floor 5. Uh, and because it has more immediate utility, I'd say definitely take it. Rampage not half bad. If you're looking for a Hexago solve, this is definitely not a terrible card. It's a bit better with the Snekoi because you can draw back into it more easily since you have higher base draw. Great. All right, we're fighting the Gremlin Knob. Do we Strength Potion, Attack Potion, or neither? I think Strength Potion solves this, solves this the most easily. What's Strength Potion? We should be able to keep the attack potion, I'm hoping. Could have tried to keep the strength potion for Hexaghost. Although, quite frankly, I'm not afraid of Hexaghost at the moment. We already seem to be doing quite well. Looks like we'll take six here. The six is fine. Get punched. Preserved Insects, making all of our elites easier to kill. You really like to see that as the first relic. You definitely don't like to see that on floor 48. Looks like we could use a little bit more blocks, so I think a Shrug It Off is fine. Am I afraid of any ghosts? No, I ain't afraid. Take that shrug. Yeah, I'm gonna go to that shop. And the mugger knows it. What are you doing here, mugger? Looter, rather. Mugger's an act too. It is you who will be giving me gold. Money, money. We want another pommel strike, not really. With Snekoi, though, I could see armaments being good. Upgraded, it'll upgrade every other card in your hand. Armaments plus, that is. Um... Normally, that's only four other cards, but with Snekawai, that's six other cards, and that's pretty sweet. I'll take it. Yeah, pull the old Uno Reverse on that mugger. Oh-ho! All right, well, the armaments just got a lot worse, but uh, we have an early Toxic Egg. When you add a skill into your deck, upgrade it. Perfect before the shop, too. 
That's going to mean a lot of green cards in our future, which is already causing this run to look very promising. My trade health for random upgrades? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I think we're going to have more upgrades than we know what to do with. And I think I could also take 20 damage to Legervulin if things went really wrong. So let's not uh, tempt fate here by losing all of my health for two random upgrades. No way. Not now. The miniature sentries. Behold, they are so small. Minus one defense. So we can play Uppercut Strike or something else. We just kill this one and we're full blocking. Okay. Might not have to use the potion. That would be cool. Looking pretty good here. Looking less good here. Take five or draw two with only one energy left. If we block, take the five. We're guaranteed getting some good blocks on the next turn, yeah. Upgraded Bash would kill. Let's do that. This is only 16. Hmm. Playing the defend might be the best line here, but it doesn't feel like it ought to be. I want to play the pummel strike. Easy every time. Okay, we took 10 damage. That went pretty well. And we picked up Singing Ball, which is freaking fantastic here. Although another long-term value relic, like the Toxic Egg. This lets us skip card rewards if we find none that we want uh, to gain two max health, which we're going to do for this one. Allowing us to scale max HP as the run goes on. Basically meaning we always get guaranteed value out of a... Card reward. The shop is hilarious. We got Limit Break. Dolly's Mirror. I could dupe this uppercut. That's not the worst idea, actually. Yeah, why did I take that unupgraded armaments again? I'm not sure. Whirlwind and Transmutation here is kind of cute. Actually, I really do like second uppercut. It's a pricey uppercut plus, but it is another uppercut plus, which is pretty awesome. We could also duplicate uh, Disarm or True Grid if we really wanted to. Disarm is a decent uh, duplication. Whirlwind is nice for AoE, that's true. I don't think I can afford the Uppercut and the Whirlwind. don't really like the Whirlwind on its own. If we duped a skill, note that we would get the upgraded version because of the Toxic Egg. Even if you're duplicating a non-upgraded version of it, uh, the Toxic Egg then upgrades the unupgraded copy that you created. 
So you get a True Grit Plus or a Disarm Plus if you dupe them. But I still think I'm going to dupe the Uppercut here. Really like having another attack there. Can't afford the Whirlwind, but I can afford a card remove. I'll do that. Whirlwind is particularly good for Sneko because of the consistency of X cost cards. I would say that's entirely true. Anger them. Here's a fight where having Whirlwind could have been pretty decent. Hmm. Next turn could hurt. Lang, thanks so much for the 16 months. How much of a difference do I think Boss Relic before card reward would make? I think it would be a buff to Snekoi in particular, because you could then take the Snekoi and then also just pick the highest cost rare card. Who needs Whirlwind? Not me. I have two uppercuts. There's the second True Grid if we want one. I think I do actually want another True Grid Plus. If I could delete every card that isn't an uppercut, that'd be great. And I've got two good potions. Let's take another event here. Although rewards are good with Singing Bowl Toxic Egg. I'm ready to fight Hexaghost, I'm pretty sure. Actually, are we? Could use a bit more damage. Let's take another reward, actually. We should look at another card. Don't be foolish. Me. Build a deck that works. Worst case scenario, we take two max health. We just uppercut everybody twice. Am I sufficiently concerned that I want fire breathing for Hexaghost here? I think I should probably take it. Hey there, Wando MD. How do I mark something green or red on the map with a mod called Map Marks? One of our uh, ease of use slash information mods that I use for the stream. Exclamation point map has a link to it. Words, words, words says, is Singing Bowl slash Toxic Egg a non-bow? Because you can only benefit from one or the other at a given fight, or a combo, because it makes normal combat rewards even more win-win, and therefore guides us to prefer normal combats over other options. I like to think of it as a, a sort of a win-win, because you, you get either or. That way you, you can't whiff on the value. You either get the benefits of one relic, or you get the benefits of the other. And a dad joke for the crowd. Did you hear about the mushroom that's always getting invited to parties? He's a real fun guy. Did not take the... Fire breathing. We might have to use the Attack Potion for Hexaghost, but I think overall we'll be just fine. I'll upgrade the Armaments, that way we can upgrade our Strikes. And I think having upgraded Attacks plus the Constant Vulnerable ought to be sufficient. At least one hopes. We can also use True Grits to delete the Burns or Defends to help us draw our attack cards a bit more often. Delete. 
All right, strike is gone. That's fine. We're most likely good, but I'm going to assure things by using the attack potion here. We're at 70% chance to get a new potion. So I'm going to invest the attack potion with the armaments upgrade. Do we take an Immolate Plus or a Searing Blow? I guess we can take an Immolate. This does so much damage right now, it's worth it. 42. Get punched. But yeah, we could have could have just kept upgrading that Searing Blow. Although I think realistically it probably only gets to about plus two. Or you have to stop. Get punched. All right, you're toast. Ghost. Fear of reports of hexaghosts' danger were greatly exaggerated. I think in part because we paid proper respect to the boss. Oh my. Now we can take a real Immolate, a real Reaper, or an upgraded rare card. Offering plus sure is juicy. Very, very juicy. However, it is no Immolate. Immolate is going to slap so hard here in Act 2, especially with the bonus damage from uppercuts. Whether we're talking one target or multiple, I really like that. That almost makes me wish I did take Fire Breathing, but whatevs. Fusion Hammer or Coffee Dripper? The Dilemma. We have no means of healing naturally. I guess, or Black Star. Or Black Star is also a completely valid choice here. That said, we have an Arma Plus, which makes uh, Fusion Hammer sound comparatively free here. I really do like having four energy in a Sneko Deco. Singing Bowl is kind of like healing, that's true. What mod is our potion chance from? That comes from Info Mod. But yeah, Black Star is uh, definitely a little tempting. We're definitely capable of killing Act 2 Elites quite handily with the Immolate, with the Preserved Insect. Disarm helps for Book of Stabbing. But the lack of energy could definitely hurt. Any idea what happened to Sneaky Teak? He's perfectly fine. He does post updates in his Discord. If you if you want uh, updates on him, I think that's the best place to get them straight from the source, is the Sneaky Teak community Discord. But basically, he's neck deep in real life. Aren't we all? This is a tough call for me. I don't think I would take Coffee Dripper. I think it's between Hammer and Black Star here. Black Star is definitely the fun pick. It lets us get the upgrade on Immolate, which is really good. But we lack some consistency. We'll have to make up for that with more relics. Is that really gonna add up to as good as one energy per turn? Maybe. I think Hammer is probably the safer pick. That's definitely how I'm feeling. But I'm willing to gamble a little bit here. Let's let's find out. Let's go Black Star. 
B. Braun, thanks for the prime sub in the 34 months. Question is, will the pathing reward the Black Star? Or will it punish us? Okay, we can get three elites. Although it is a pretty mediocre path overall. And it requires not going to a shop. Do I see that correctly? I do see that correctly. Although I'm kind of poor, so I guess that's fine. Starts with five combats in a row. Oof. That is not what you want to see. We also do have the chance of the Burning Elite. I like that we can opt in or out. I guess this will be our intended path. We get nothing but combats, which is good singing bowl value. I can do three and a shop. Oh, one, two, three, shop. Yes, you're right. If we go through the Burning Elite, we can. Yes. Yes, as long as one of them is the Burning Elite, we can do three in the shop. Let's see how the fights go. These could be bad, though. Well, maybe not. No, this seems pretty good, in fact. I want to... No, I'll upgrade this card. The Shrug. Okay. That is fine. Won't hesitate to use potions if I feel they're necessary. Here's where having extra energy would go a long way. We could play... Um, uppercut and True Grit. Bash, Uppercut, Pommel Strike is not going to kill here, surely, right? That would be... 8, 19, 13. Only 39. And even the Distilled Chaos does not do a ton, right? Hmm. Unfortunate. I think it's Bash, Uppercut, Defend. Take 7. Yeah, none of these draws are going to block more than this. Okay, so what? Seven health lost to Avocado? That's very good. Perfectly happy with that. Battle Trance Plus is back. Honestly, even with the Sneko Eye, I think this card is worth adding. At least one of. Because it draws so many. If, it, if it's zero or one cost, it's very likely that the newly drawn cards will be worth it. But I'm going to grab that rather than taking two health. Card draw is the same thing as energy with Sneko, in a, in a sense. All right, I think we found the use of the, of the distilled chaos here, because this hand is a hot mess. So, I think I just YOLO. You don't play any other cards first? I don't think so. Leave the Battle Trance. Okay, well that blocked for 22. That's perfect. Disarm you, punch you. Then kill. That was pretty good overall. We do get a potion back, an attack potion. The only zero cost cards that are viable with Sneko are card draw, right? I wouldn't say that. I've actually done a Sneko claw deck before, although that was a long time ago. I wouldn't say there's a, a hard rule as to which zero cost cards are and aren't viable. For example, Intimidate could be worth it if we needed more Weaken. Although, obviously, Shockwave is just a way better card for Sneko. Uh, if you don't find a Shockwave, sometimes Intimidate is 
enough. Here, though, I'm taking the two health. Yeah, you just want your cards to be higher impact. And sometimes zero cost cards are high impact. Another zero cost card that's very worth it with Sneko Eye, Dark Shackles. Same with Panic Button. Those have a very large impact, even though they're zero cost cards. Let's draw that again. Immolate will save us here, surely. Surely. An arm of burst. I want to draw two. I did not get immolate. And since I know I'm drawing Immolate next turn, I think I'd rather damage and make vulnerable one of these and then just full block. Okay, two cost is fine. Here's another turn where having more energy would go a long way, though. The Immolate plus Strike won't... No, that will kill exactly, right? That's exactly 40? That's exactly 40. We do Immolate, Strike, Defend, take six. That's fine. No need to potion here. Kill guaranteed. I'm going to pummel first. Okay, that helps. Now we can do armaments, shrug, bash. We're going to defend. Okay, you're dead. Good. This is going well. I wouldn't say we have a particularly good Sneko deck at the moment, but it's doing well enough. We want a block 13 card. It's okay. I'd rather have a Flame Barrier. Nah, I'll just take two health. Keep that health ticking upwards. Only two more fights until our first Elite. We're doing pretty well so far. Sneko seems like a, a pretty good matchup here, so that's encouraging. Waste your first turn, nerd. I'm already confused. Keep him weak. It didn't debuff us immediately either. This is going well. Maybe too well. True Grit Uppercut or Battle Trance? Battle Trance could make things worse with the burn. I'm just going to True Grit Uppercut here. Good enough. Twelve plus nine. You're dead. Okay. Do get a potion. Second wind plus. Oh, yeah. Lissar says, how often is it a good idea to buy pellets when you have Sneko Eye? Our last run actually did that. I'd say it's actually fairly often pretty good and f sort of flips the viability, right? Zero cost cards suddenly become really good if you can purge the confusion. Um, removing the confusion gives you consistency, which is quite nice. And if you build your deck appropriately, it can be very powerful to just have two more draw per turn. For example, if there was a boss relic that just said draw two more cards every turn with no other effect, I would click on that relic a lot. Pretty much all the time. How do I feel about Power Potion? Doesn't feel like it does much for us in the short term. I'm going to swap it for the Swift Potion. Let's find Immolate, perhaps. Speaking of Immolate, perhaps. We're not that good at this fight. Not with this opening draw. A little concerning. 
turn, we get attack for 22 here. Battle Trance. Okay, we got two zero cost cards off that Battle Trance. That was good. Looks like we want to focus our efforts on the Spheric Guardian. Get to uppercut immolate it next turn. So let's bash, remove one artifact right now. We draw bash again or uppercut the other one. We can do some damage here. As it stands, we're quite a bit short on both block and damage. So the question is, which potion do I use to solve this problem? I don't know that the attack pot will get us there. What's our damage? We have 13 plus 21, 34. 30. So we are 36 damage short. There's no attack that will do 36 damage. Not even bludgeon will do 36 damage. Meanwhile, if I swift potion, worst case scenario, I can probably second win some stuff. Almost everything in the draw pile is not an attack card. Okay. We got zero cost strikes. And now second wind blocks for a fair bit. Although that would mean skipping the immolate if I played the second wind. This turn sucks. I also just do immolate defend plus. It's not like next turn is much better, right? They both they both attack for a lot next turn. It's going badly. We got so close. Damn it. All right, we'll play Immolate. Strike, strike, defend. Yeah, four energy here would have been so good. For sure. Let's do 10, unfortunately. Mm. Okay, uppercut you then. Armaments defend. Stop killing me. Ah, uh, again, four energy. Dang, we got so close. I hate when Black Star does this. But I knew that going into Black Star. I knew that this was the risk. out of this fight. Let's see, we can True Grit, Defend, Disarm. Is there any way to just kill it? 23. Uh, wait, no, if I Bash, if I Disarm, then Uppercut, it's vulnerable, then Bash does 15. That kills, yeah. Disarm, Uppercut, Bash. There we go. I'll take a Feel No Pain, giving us block every time a card is exhausted. Very good with Second Win, very good with True Grit, very good with Disarm. And we're going to hope that 19 health and an Attack Potion can defeat the Miniature Slavers. It's all up to Battle Trance. Battle Trance, how goes it? Then Jorgen Worgen, a dad joke for the crowd. What's the first thing the Ironclad puts on in the morning? His battle pants. Oh, we get zero cost immolate. Life's good. Do I ever think a, think a run is basically lost, but keep going anyway? Yes, yes. I think it's important to never give up because you might be overlooking solutions that exist. And because Spire can be very generous at times, and so in the span of a single card reward, um, or a single elite reward, things can really turn around. For example, we could get Strength and Reaper from this combat, as long as we win. 
Although I see that block options in this hand are a bit underwhelming, so I think I need to kill two slavers, not just one. Let's start by disarming the middle guy, then I can play the attack potion. We can really look at all of our options here. So right now we uppercut and then immolate. That kills this fellow, but doesn't kill either of these. I've only got 20... Well, let's see, I'll have uh, two energy left. So I can play Immolate Pummel Strike. That's only 30 damage. This fellow will have seven health left. But as long as I can get seven damage from the attack potion, which seems exceedingly likely, um, then we can get two kills here. There's no world where I get to play a block card, is there? I don't think so. Fiendfire is definitely the, the best damage option, though. We'll take that. Yeah, I can't play Immolate Shrug Fiendfire and get two kills, so it has to be kill the front and the back, take five. That's fine. And Pommel, Pommel can draw a card for us, too. That's also true. I think the Pommel Strike goes on the middle guy. Oh, no, no, I can't draw. Actually, that's right. We can't draw. So, no, there is no out here. We're taking five. Okay, then I don't need to panic so hard. Okay. So yes, Pummel Strike can go on Taskmaster here. Big five. We did survive this fight. Pretty sure. I can't attack and block. Let's pass the turn then. Unless... No, we did. We're, we're out of here. Okay, we get Potion Belt, which is unfortunately empty, plus Tungsten Rod. Whenever we would lose health, lose one less. That could prolong our survival here. Unfortunately, going to the Burning Elite is, I think, an act of suicide at this point. Seems crazy, uh, unlikely to work out, versus resting at the fire, which I would love to do. Seeing red is green. No, it's red. Could be something amazing here. Or... It could be the Augmenter. Who could give us three strength on turn one. That's actually kind of cool. Alternately could transform two cards. And a transform two with Sneko and with Toxic Egg. Sounds pretty cool. I am definitely open to transforming two strikes here. Seeing red's half an energy on average, is that not worth it? I don't think so. Not even with the feel no pain. Although if we get one for free here, I wouldn't complain too much. We get heavy blade, sword boomerang. Maybe strength is just around the corner. At minimum, heavy blade is definitely better than a strike is, so that's fine. Superb. All right, we're not going red. We're sleeping. We're sleeping. We're sleeping over here. Hey, the strength is here. For playing three attacks in one turn, we can gain one point of strength. That's something, at least. But can we survive the short term? I say yes, we can. Let's see. Feel no pain blocks for six this turn and potentially more. Uppercut blocks for five this turn. A bit more next turn. Trigger blocks for the most. I feel no pain, true grit, disarm. We block for 15. Being attacked for 19. Take three. Three's not bad. Oh, 
other option, uppercut, true grit, disarm, maybe, for the best long-term value. If I uppercut, true grit, disarm, what's that? We go to 16 on the enemy, actually 19 weakens to 15? 15 on the enemy. Block for 9? No, that's not enough. Feel no pain, disarm. Lower that strength. Take three. Do you have to worry about this thing, the fungi beast? I guess immolate should take care of it by and large. By and large. Dang. Arma Pommel? Gotta be. This will hurt a bit. Actually, that only went to 6 by 2 That really wasn't bad. That wasn't so bad. Alright, get me out of here. Dual Wield Plus. Choose an attack or power card. Add two copies of that card into your hand. Absolutely one of my favorite cards of all time with Sneko Eye. Being able to duplicate a card in your hand is ludicrous, but even more ludicrous is the dual wield copies the current cost of the card. So if you dual wield a zero cost attack, well, guess what? You have three copies of a zero cost attack. Oh, whoops, I forgot to block the bird's attack. Like. Direct. If you purge the confused from Sneko, do you still draw seven? You sure do. You sure do. Ow, by the way. The bird has the last laugh. Ah. Oh. One more regular fight. Okay, that's hopefully encouraging. Give me a potion, please. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. All right, I'll take another Shrug Plus, but I am admittedly uh, very concerned about how this next fight's going to go. We could definitely just fall over dead here. It is the Book of Stabbing, and yes, falling over does seem to be the called-for occasion here. I guess it's Feel No Pain Strike. Could play Shrug. But I think we're in for a bad time. Okay, that's not too bad then. Why don't we just disarm you? That will make our life way easier. would be good here. God. Okay. Um. More pummel strikes for future. Okay. Okay. Uppercut would be good here. Dang it, Uppercut. Just counting on you.
Jeez. Ow. Heck. Yeah, not having four energy is, is really tough. <laughs> Heck, I say. This better be some really good relics, the book drops. We only have three hit points. Get Bag of Marbles, making enemies vulnerable on turn one. And I'm going to take two hit points, because that's a 66% increase in hit points. Just two more fights to go. Okay. No, we're dead. <laughs> we're dead to these nerds? Wait, maybe not. Hold on, we have 16 block. That's not going to cut it, right? It's going to cut it. All right. Life's good. Not dead. Yet. Cut that mustard. Keep them dying. Please keep them dying. This could be one of the comebacks of all time. Those are for later. Those uppercuts. Have mercy, Mr. Centurion. Please. Oh, no. Uh, we can block for 14, 17. Take zero. Okay, take zero is fine. Yeah, take zero is fine. Next turn could be bad, though. Where's Immolate at? No! <laughs> second Wind saved me! Actually, Second Wind did save me. Good job, Second Wind. Very good job. Everything's fine. talk. Here we are. We're out of here. Get me the heck out of here. Punch, punch, punch. I live! Now we have two potions and six hit points. That's even more hit points. Okay, six health, two potions into Slavers the Rematch. Only thing that really matters is surviving this turn, which means I'm very likely to Swift Potion here. If we get a decent dual wield target, everything's over. Currently, dual wield is not going to cut it. I guess I can Shrug first, right? If Shrug draws zero cost immolate, I don't have to play the Swift Pot. Let's Shrug first. Hmm. This is a substantial improvement. Uh, now we Swift Potion, though. Okay. It's actually kind of bad. Hmm. Play that Pummel Strike. Draw one more if we want to. Um, can I full block this turn, actually? Let's double check here. If I uppercut the back guy, he goes to 9 damage, I believe, or is it 10? It's 10. So they would attack for 30? 30. I can block for 13 plus 12, 25. So I would live that. What if I played Disarm instead of Armaments? Then 
then I would gain more block, right? Yeah, that'd be more block, because I would reduce the incoming damage by two, and I would block for 18 plus 8, 26. I think that's the line, then. Uppercut, dual wield to feel no pain, play all three, and then disarm. Are we ever able to kill the red slaver here? See, this does 19. This does 21. That's already a kill if you play them both. So I could also do uppercut heavy blade, dual wield, feel no pain. Hmm. If I strength potion, that's not going to give me anything. Does Uppercut Pummel Strike kill? Not by default, right? 13 plus 19 is... Uh, 32. Which won't kill any of them. We could also do triple uppercut, right? Yeah, we could do triple uppercut. If I played Feel No Pain and then dual wielded uppercut. So two uppercuts kills the back guy. One uppercut weakens the front guy down to nine. We would block for 11. That would technically survive. And I think make some of the best progress in this fight. Dr. So Dr. Osophilus, thanks so much for the Prime sub and the three months of support. And yeah, Strength, strength Potion would, would let us kill with Upper Cut and then Pummel Strike. Although I honestly don't see a lot of advantage to doing so. Since I have no other one-cost cards in my hand, right? There's nothing we can actually guaranteed play if I kill with only two energy. So as far as I'm concerned, we have two different lines before us. Option A. Play Uppercut Heavy Blade on the back Red Slaver to kill him, then Dual Wield to Feel No Pain. Play all three of them. We get 9 block from Ascender's Bane Exhausting, so we go to 8 plus 9 is 17 block. This guy hits us for 13, we go to 4 block. This guy hits us for 3, we take 2 with Tungsten Rod. So we take 2, we go to the next turn, and the back guy is dead. Option B, play Feel No Pain, then dual wield uppercut. Play two uppercuts on the red slaver, killing him, and one uppercut on the blue slaver, dealing 19 damage, applying vulnerable, and weakening them, meaning they'll deal 9 damage instead of 13. Then we play the one feel no pain. Block for 3, go to 11 block. This guy attacks for 9, we go to 2 block. This guy attacks for 7, we take 5, which goes to 4. We take 4 damage. But the front guy is weakened, vulnerable, and injured for next turn. So is it worth trading two health to uppercut the front guy? How do we fit three uppercuts in our hands? We make room in hand for one by playing the Feel No Pain. 
And then the dual wield is no longer in our hand when we play it. So when we play dual wield, there are two slots in hand for two additional uppercuts. Triple Feel No Pain line also means we have Triple Feel No Pain in play, meaning it's a lot easier to block with True Grit or Second Wind next turn. But I do like having the front guy uppercut. I really, I really like being able to kill with something like Double Strike. How many hit points will he have? Oh, also we get a point of strength with the Triple Uppercut line. Yeah, I'm going to go Triple Uppercut line with the point of strength here. So, feel no pain, dual wield, uppercut. So, all three uppercuts go in hand. Punch, punch, punch. Okay, looks fine. As long as one Sword Boomerang hits the Blue Slaver, Bash will kill them. And the second wind is a full block either way, right? So I don't even need to actually kill them. Good. Now True Good is a full block, so I can Battle Trance? I don't want to. This is a little spooky. One strike kills, though, so I think we're guaranteed, actually. All right, we didn't die. However, we also didn't get a whole lot of immediate value here. We got a Maw Bank and a Whetstone, and maybe one more Uppercut if we really want it. But we're fighting Champ, and I think Champ we can probably beat. Heal for two is reasonable. It gives us more max health, meaning the upcoming rest heals for more, too. Double our current health. I think you can probably infer from our current predicament that uh, we probably should have taken the Fusion Hammer from our first boss. We'd be in much better shape right now. That said, if we can get out of this act alive, things might just turn out okay. Okay, we can armor the Feel No Pain. Could also dual wield the Feel No Pain, although I don't think that's actually going to be too necessary here. I do think that I want to use the Strength Potion in this fight. Yeah, I think I do. It could stack to 999 Feel No Pain with the dual wield. Wouldn't that be cute? Ornbird, thanks for the 13 months of support and the tier 1 sub. Leap card. Yeah, I can't block if I play two more attacks, huh? to block. All right. Don't mind if I do. Health is 220. Don't play this one. Also, don't need three burns yet. Could do bash, strike, boomerang if I just want to scale strength. It doesn't do very much damage, though. Good enough. This is 40. That would have us weakened Vuln for Execute. I don't love that. 
Maybe I'm meant to wait here. Let's wait here. Although I can still do Bash Strike Heavy Blade Plus. turn. Okay, he's going for the debuff again. Oh, okay, now, oh wait, I can't play the dual world though. Ooh. Although we did put him below half, so we have to go now. Fair enough. Let's go then. This means we're not vulnerable for execute, actually. We pulled that off. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, that's not so good. We can second win to avoid drawing this burn or just play the sword boomerang and deal some damage. I think I'm just going to play the boomerang. We have uppercut next turn. I'm hoping that that enough would be fine here. It's actually not that much execute damage because we're not vulnerable here. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh yeah, that's what you want to see. Sneko Eye coming in clutch when it really counts. What a hand. Correct, sir. Neko delivers. We get to go to Act 3. We can take Reaper or Barricade. Reaper is looking not so bad. Although Barricade is also somewhat tempting here. Or another offering plus. But surely it feels like Reaper would be much beloved here. And then we're hopefully taking any form of energy we can get. Although we know it won't be Coffee Dripper or Fusion Hammer. I'm fine with Cursed Key. I'm fine with Runic Dome. I'm fine with Mark of Pain, even. And there's Kursky and Runic Dome. I'll take Kursky. Skart, thanks for the Prime sub and the 10 months. And Pistorbel. What an act, too, right? Thanks for 49 months of support. Yeah, we just click the Energy Relic. Thankfully, there's a choice to make here. I say we click the Cursed Key. My big fear here is not being able to go to a shop in Act 3. Hopefully the path will allow it. Uh-oh. No! <laughs> Damn it. Okay, maybe there's a random one. Yeah, so we either go to this shop or we fight two more elites. Yikes. First things first, though. We have to fight the Burning Elite. Woody in the Hoodie says, currently downloading Baldur's Gate 3. Any tips? There's a, a lot of different things to, to think about in, in VG3. I, I suppose some, some quick combat tips um, can help here. Specific to VG3, if you attack enemies when they cannot see you, you'll usually get a surprise round at the start of combat. That can make a huge difference. If any of your party members are knocked down and dying, then any amount of healing will get them back up. You can either use the help action with another character... Um, that way you don't have to use a resource. Um, or you can throw a healing potion near them from afar to get them up from a distance. Hmm, anything else? I mean, there's lots of BG3 specific uh, little idiosyncrasies that can help out. It's a complicated game with a lot of complicated stuff going on in it. But it's a great game overall. 
Let's see. Is this True Grit Immolate? If I Arma Immolate, uh, you die, right? So I can just Arma Immolate, take one. Take one is fine. Yeah, rest early, rest often is a good tip. You get plenty of rest supplies, even on the highest difficulties in that game. Let's just do Arma Immolate. Take one. We have no... Oh, we have Reaper. That's right. We have Reaper. Maybe I can get some health from Reaper. Just a bit. for more Reaper opportunities in the future. I will definitely take a power through plus, 20 block and two wounds. Kind of wishing I'd taken barricade now, but oh well. We discover the glowing Tesseract, which can offer us colorless cards. I will look at colorless cards. Several of them are pretty good and we get a slight discount. Dark Shackles plus, oh yeah, we can skip them for max health too. Even better. Yeah, I'll take a Panic Button Plus and a Dark Shackles Plus. Cards I specifically called out as being good, despite being zero cost with this Neko Eye. And yes, we do, in fact, get the Bonus Merchant, which means we can spend our money and handle all these elites, which is excellent news. Couple really good potions here, but right now I'm eyeing Bag of Prep and Orrery. Orrery full of upgraded cards. At worst, this is 10 max health for 164 gold, and that's a pretty good deal. At worst. That's garbage. This is garbage. Feel no pain. Yoink. Shockwave plus. Definitely yoink. Juggernaut. Oh, yeah. This is definitely a deck that appreciates a Juggernaut. I'm also thinking something like Bag of Prep card remove, or maybe Bag of Prep potion, perhaps Fury in a bottle. With this much max health, Fury is pretty good. How much better does a potion belt make a Fury in a bottle? I think it makes it a fair bit better, because it's more reasonable to hold on to it till the very end of the game. Um, and it's not as bad to occupy a potion slot with it long term. I definitely want 9 draw turn 1. That's grand. Might want to have enough money that we can remove the curse we're going to get. We are going to get a curse from this chest. We have to open it. And I won't be able to get rid of it before the boss is. It's kind of spooky. I think that's all the more reason to have a fairy, quite frankly. I'm going to buy that fairy. Although I wish I could buy it into the fourth slot. Come on, game. Thirty damage. I can block with power through dark shackles, and then I can still play uppercut. Doesn't seem reasonable to Reaper, although Reaper heals for more than I would take, right? So we should do Reaper uppercut power through. Okay. Although I could have potentially stalled to get totally full health here. In practice, I'm pretty sure I kill them with Immolate, and then I leave. Hello. Emily, don't be like that. Let's take a shrug plus.
All right, we have to go here. Duplicate a card in our deck. Wish this was upgraded because I think Juggernaut might be the upgrade. It might be the duplication here. Dual wield is also actually dual wield might be better. Double dual wield. Second shockwave, not bad. Quadruple wield. Let's duel the dual wield. I might regret that. There will be hands where it's no good. Uh oh. This Reptomancer has too much strength. This draw is really bad. I think I'm gonna YOLO the top three cards. Well, no, I should do that next turn. I should do that next turn. Spooky. All right, just top me up, I guess. That would be a good time, Immolate. Now would be a really, really good time. Okay, that was not Immolate, but that was a crap load of block, which is pretty good. Okay, we can True Grit, get rid of a wound here. And I can just kill these two daggers. Take eight, uh, seven rather. And then we can do Shockwave Immolate. Shockwave Immolate for sure. Come on, dual wield, get it together. So I'm second winning the dual wield for block this time. Although I could do something else here. Good energy potion, double immolate. I don't hate that, because I need Rupto to be dead. This fight is going awkwardly. There's all there's seven statuses, no, six statuses in the draw pile. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Okay. Seems more or less fine. Just keep punching. No. <laughs> Well, I did that to myself. All right, Battle Trance, it's all on you. Save me. It did not save me. Not quite. Ah, oh, so close. Ouch. Well, minus a lot. Mr. Defend? Yeah, we had no block. From Panic Button there. I probably shouldn't have played the Panic Button. I should have just eaten the damage on the previous turn so we could block more if I bricked. At least Helix is back. Helix, my good friend. Now oh, we need combats. Hopefully combats go well for us. I think they will, on average, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Don't play power through. It's gonna block 12 to avoid damage this turn. It's not so bad. Unless you're telling me I can kill with dual wield. I don't think so. 
No, I can't. Sixteen, twenty-one. To wield the Reaper. Could try to hold this one and dual wield it again, but I don't think we're going to have that luxury in this fight. time. I think we can claw our way back into this run. In Flame, normally not the sort of power I'd be too thrilled about. Here, because we have Reaper, it's good enough. Definitely good enough. All right, Reaper, this is your chance. No, you're too early. Not now. It's still okay. We can do Immolate Reaper. Heal for a bunch. Reaper, you fool! Yeah, we just go Immolate, then Reaper. Heal for 18 again. Just can't kill, but I can full block, so that's fine. Ah, uh, good. Two uppercuts. It's fine. As well. Get an elixir, allowing us to exhaust any, any number of cards in our hands. Combust is a bit better with Tungsten Rod, but I don't think it's worth it here. Let's just take two more max health. We have to open this chest, don't forget. We must take the blue key that's inside. So normality is here. I'm not too afraid of normality, though, with Second Wind and the Elixir. And knowing that this isn't a Reptomancer and that we do have a Black Star, I'll be fighting yet another Elite here. This time, the Nemesis. I think I'll use the Elixir right away. I want to block. We can go Feel No Pain, Juggernaut... Elixir. And deal a bunch of damage. Then uppercut boomerang. Sounds good. Here's a fun example of being able to rely on Panic Button. Nemesis attacked last turn, and is uh, multi-attacked last turn, and is multi-attacking this turn. They cannot do the multi-attack three turns in a row, which means there's only two possibilities for next turn. Either they do one singular hit, and the buffer stops it, or they give us burns, and we don't have to block. Burns. We get the burns. Feel the burns. There's the 45. But fear not, we can block it easily.
Reaper, no. Actually, wait, Reaper, yes? Heal me. For one. Wait, upgrade this one. The power. Plus three. We get meal ticket healing us at shops. Okay. Question card for more options from card rewards. Sure. And I think two more health. Although body slam is interesting. Body slam can do really good damage. Sometimes. All right, you can come along. You can come along. Yeah, body slam panic button. Body slam can do cool things with dual wield too. Just overall pretty good. Got a double punch though. Could have been a worse turn for sure. Also, this enemy never attacks after multi-attacking, so we can play Panic Button here as well. Wait. Right, that's not upgraded. Never mind. Give me Reaper, or give me Death. Right, health is definitely trending upwards here. Heavy Blade is not the worst, but seems kind of unnecessary, especially with Body Slam. Let's just keep taking health. Take two rest sites. I've got a recall, and we could upgrade one card. Inflame or Juggernaut or Feel No Pain are probably the best options. I like the Inflame upgrade a lot with the Reaper here. Is Havoc ever worth adding? I like it with the Frozen Eye Relic. I think that's when it's best. Extra event here could be quite something. Could get Mind Bloom or Double Orb Walkers for an extra rare relic over that upgrade. Tough call, actually. I think we're doing quite well. I'm going to take the upgrade. Could be remove normality, although that's a bit of a long shot. Yeah, upgrade that juggernaut, put it in play. Definitely. I'm going to panic button body slam here. It's going to be tremendous damage. Ninety-seven. We don't get attacked on this turn either. Please make some more reapers. Go dual wield on the feel no pain. 
flame one of them, and now I have to second wind. Still have our buffer. One cost Reaper, zero cost dual wheel. Let's do it. Yeah. Full health. And the Eternal Feather. Healing us when we visit a rest site. And the Omomori, negating curses. And another potion. And a Sentinel or Power Through. Sentinel looks pretty good. We have a lot of ways to exhaust cards. Take a Sentinel. Yeah, Omomori right on time as usual. And then the Transient. Should be able to beat this without using any potions, especially since we have the... Buffer here. Although normality could definitely mess with me. Yeah, not quite there. Okay, so we lose our buffer. All good. Two more turns. I was just thinking if I draw the normality, we can true get it. Okay, that's not too bad. Good, that's enough. Okay. This went well. Will there be another run after this? Yes, I would like to do another run after this one. Demon form. Or burning pack plus. But yeah, we got Reaper and Dual Wheel. This is super take the demon form. And this is why you recall a little bit before the last fire, because now, instead of having to recall, we can upgrade demon form. Which I will do. Immediately. Finally, a nice three cost rare. A great answer to time eater, especially, I was going to say, especially if we can dual wield it. And look at this. This is what Demon Form Sneko Eye can do for a deck. Nine strength per turn, please. Yeah, rest in peace, Tim. Poor Tim. Hardly knew what hit him. Two cards next turn. One. I'll button this. Sure. Can't gain block directly, but we can still gain block from Feel No Pain. We get 21 here, which does not actually stop this. Badly. Hmm. Almost Strike does 81 damage, apparently.
think you're dead, Time Eater. Punch. Punch. Slam. Yeah, not clear if we have enough strength. Deeply unclear. Second up to bat here is Donu Deka. We again get Demon Form turn one, although this time... I don't get to dual wield it. It's just getting played for three cost. Um, can I full block? No. So let's do Arma Pommel Strike. See if that changes. No. Okay. Get rid of that. And Body Slam for strength. So we lose the buffer, but we take no damage. And we have Demon Form in play, so I think life is pretty good. Here's where Panic Button is less good, because we know they attack every single turn. I'll just take some damage, get my powers down. We know we can heal, after all. Hello? Healing? No. Oh. Hmm, not if my draws are like this, we can't. Tungsten Rod, save me. You are my only hope. Second Wind, save me. Second Wind is not here. Second Wind, what are you doing? All right, this is getting awkward. And not the good kind. Hmm. Take additional Reapers. They don't do anything now, so I won't play either of them now. We'll be back for those, hopefully. Damage continues to escalate here. It's starting to get nasty. Although that's true on both sides. We can just kill Donu here. Like will be a bit easier. Very little block in the draw pile. I'm going to play Panic Button now, then. Try to kill Donu next turn. Let's go Heavy Blade Panic Button here. And even if we have to face tank this hit, life will be okay. Well, not great. Body Slam is only 36 damage, so I guess I have to Battle Trance, or we could maybe Explosive Potion and hope Juggernaut finishes the job here. I think I'll Battle Trance. Yeah, that worked out. You dead, kid. You dead. Okay, now is our chance to get some health back, maybe. This does 46 by 4. Yeah, so we can Reaper first, get all of our health back, and then just win. Easy peasy. We're through the Act bosses with full health. Not that we needed to be, because of Eternal Feather meal ticket. I think even one hit point would have meant healing back to full. Two thump, two thump, two thump. A deep, pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this... The heart of the Spire, have I been here before? Was this Black Star a mistake? I think the answer might be yes. But the good news is we didn't perish. We did survive. And we now have what seems like a pretty solid deck with a heck of a lot of hit points. And yes, still that fairy in a bottle carrying us to the end here. I'm going to upgrade my Juggernaut to improve my per block damage. And we could buy a third dual wield. Which I might actually do. 
Don't want to battle trance. Don't love the frozen eye. We can see our draw pile in order, but we don't know what it's going to cost, so it's still a bit up in the air. You can see that after that first un unfortunate fight, the Sneko Eye has very much evened out the uh, costs, and we've gotten within a single digit number across over a thousand cards uh, the same number for, of draws for each cost. That's really cool to see the law of large numbers at play there. Oh yeah, we have a normality. Let's get rid of that stupid thing. And yeah, I'm buying this dual wield. Onwards and upwards. The claw of large numbers. Demon form, good to see ya. Ooh, and Shockwave is here too. Go demon form. Uppercut you? And shockwave. I think that's good. And then... Yeah. A bit of a bummer. Definitely not the hand we were looking for here. Gonna take 28 damage and lose our buffer. Nothing Reaper can't get back, though. And then next turn we face even more danger. Doesn't feel like any of the potions make a big impact here. And don't worry, the explosive potions will save me, surely. Surely those will save me. That's a more real problem. Although dual wield on strike might be enough here, is that true? But also uppercut. Yeah, that sounds like enough, actually. As this does 19 by 3 plus 30, is that already a kill? That's yeah, already a kill. I don't even need to potion here. Although, no, I couldn't do wield and then second wind. That's not how it works. Okay, that's fine. Like I said, we'll just get our strength, uh, our health back with Reaper if possible. Hmm. Next turn's the next multi hit, huh? That's a bummer. We actually just missed the Reaper entirely as it got shuffled back onto the bottom. So we don't get our health back, unfortunately. But hopefully with the fairy and the rod and the buffer, we still have enough. The boot. And wow. Every single fight, we got demon form on turn one. Couldn't ask for a better showing from the demon form. This is either Panic Button Shockwave demon form or True Grit demon form. I don't think I want to play Panic Button, so we'll skip the Shockwave. Could be cheaper. Yeah, I guess. We 
get rid of defend. Maybe bash. Get rid of bash. All right. Thanks, Demon Form. Big hit first. One time. Dang it. I still block this. Maybe. Yes. Dark Shackles. All right. That means we get to buffer the big hit. And we're looking really good here. Wonderful news. Pummel first here. Okay, Reaper. I don't think I play that yet. With three energy, it can be Sentinel Dark Shackles Immolate or Armaments Dark Shackles Strike. I think I prefer Armament. Actually, no, I can't play the Strike, right? No, it just has to be Armaments Dark Shackles. That's fine. Don't play any more cards because I have no more block. Actually, no, play this for Juggernaut. Okay, cool. Get to buffer this. Not a great time to have drawn Disarm or the Dual Wields or the Body Slam, but oh well. Still missing our Feel No Pains. Those are a good target for the Blessing of the Forge. I don't play Second Wind here, I, although I could. I think deleting our Dual Wields is probably not wise. Why not dual wield the uppercut? I probably should have. Yeah, I probably should have. I'm looking just to get stuff played at the moment. So far, we haven't done much damage to Hard, but we're in great condition overall. Turn looks kind of bad. Thankfully, we have our fairy. Hit first. You got it. No true grit here, huh? Or no uppercut. No, it's got to be no true grit. Or no feel no pain is the other option. I could do uppercut, true grit. No, we should do feel no pain, uppercut. It's going to hurt. I'm going to take the full 47 to the face here, pretty much. But we're starting to deal damage very quickly. Oh, good. I was afraid we might not survive this turn, but panic buttons here. Good showing, panic button. Excellent. Dual wield the Reaper. Punch. Reaper. Now we have Pendid. As well. Although no Reapers. Next turn is iffy, actually. They'll have Disarm here to remove some damage from the next multi-hit, so we can do that now. Our reward for holding on to that thing. Can't play Strike. Keep our pen nib. That's only a 3 by 15 It's good because this hurts. I'm going to punch you for 123 damage, okay? Sounds good to me. That's what, Arma defends? Might as well Strike. Ow. But now we can just win, right? It's all over, because Heavy Blade is just a KO. GG. GG. I'm a little surprised we won this one, honestly, but uh, that was that was fun. 
What a run. What a run. GG. GG. The Black Star worked out in the end. Although, like I said, I wouldn't take that again. Uh, I think that ended up being a, a poor choice for Act 2. But we were able to keep the ship upright and even freed our fairy friend at the top of the spire. GG. GG, Twitch Jet. How much did Tungsten Rod block is a great question. Has it been done? Yep. We're finished. That demon form made all the difference, too. We got that last minute, truly last minute, floor 48, the final card reward outside of Act 4. Tungsten Rod prevented 68 damage. An entire health bar worth of damage. Most of it in Act 4, I believe. Pretty good. Yeah, and that demon form was turn one in every fight where it mattered, which was insane. Was Reaper better than Barricade? I think Barricade could have done some really good work this run, but as we saw, the Reaper was able to, after we took 70 damage to Reptomancer, Reaper was able to get us back to full HP. Barricade couldn't do that. And Barricade's equally bad against Repto here. Really well done. All right, after that hectic run, it's definitely break time for me, Twitch chat. So I'm going to take a quick couple of minutes here, refill the water, stretch the legs. When I return, we're playing another run as the Ironclad on A20 here in Slay the Spire. Be right back.
Uh oh, I must have left the mic on again. My bad, Twitch chat. My bad. <laughs> this is too good. It's too good. <laughs> All right, Twitch chat. Are you ready for run number six here? Oh, <laughs> yeah. I must have accidentally left the mic off there. Let's play some Ironclad <laughs> without me uh, cracking up, hopefully. <laughs> you have summoned me. Oh, I like this path. It's been a while since we had an act one that actually looked pretty good. Rest sites up front, elites up behind, burning elite at the very end. Love it. We also have Slime Boss at the end of the act. The only problem here is that our starting bonuses are mid. We've got remove a card, three random potions, choose a rare card for a curse, or boss swap. I don't love any of those. Do we do another boss swap? I'm I'm not convinced that we do. I don't think it's as good going into slime boss here. That said, we could remove a curse very early. So actually, choose a rare is not terrible if I go here. So curse for a rare or remove one. I like the curse for a rare, actually. Looking at this path, I really like curse for a rare. We have just one fight with the curse. That's not so bad. Let's do it. Yeah, clad rares are pretty good early game. Especially if you can choose one. And I say a pain for an offering is a great trade. Absolutely a great trade. Love me an offering. Yoink. <laughs> glorious. Uh, French Fi Apocalypse. Glorious. <laughs> Hmm. Lost at Leon, thank you so much for the prime sub. Welcome to the cozy sub club. Population U. Offering a guaranteed draw pain? I don't think I want to do that. But maybe I do? I don't think so. It's okay to lose extra health in this fight. Jawworm with a curse especially is super scary. So getting out of here alive is good by me. Probably take a cleave and a slime boss act over Peace Strike or Sword Boomerang. Peace Strike is fine. But I think I take cleave here. Oh, oh no. Um. All right. What kind of run will it be? Let the gremlin decide. Is it oops, two curses? Or is it uh, free remove? It's a shiv, because of course it is. Right to the face. Ow. Well, you know, it's better than getting cursed again, so thank you. I wish I could buy this. Oh, I can. Good. I like it. I'll take a second wind here. Exhaust all of our non-attack cards. De definitely has synergies with uh, fighting slime boss, right? Lots of statuses here. No chance for ice cream or calipers or medical kit on this run. I don't totally dislike seeing those relics go by. Seems fine. Hmm. Not a lousy turn one. I like it. Maybe we even heal six here. We do. Yeah, 
Kind of makes up for getting stabbed. Evolve. Evolve makes Slime Boss a lot easier. Other than that, we're probably taking Thunderclap here if I have to take something. This upcoming Elite is looking a little tough, though, if I don't take Thunderclap. Maybe I do take Thunderclap. Yeah, with Cleave, Thunderclap is acceptable, I guess. I guess I'll take it. It's true that Evolve could solve sentries for us, but my greater concern here is less the sentries and more the Gremlinov and Legavulin, against whom Evolve is no help whatsoever. Iron Wave and Anger are pretty good, though. Anger especially, with our offering, I really like. Take an Anger. Okay, now I'm feeling better about the Elite. As for upgrades, we can upgrade Cleave or maybe upgrade Offering. Upgrade Offering to draw way more cards. How do I feel about Pain and Rupture? It can be very strong. Rock and Raz, but it's all, it's really hard to pull it off successfully. Works best with Runic Cube. Uh, why does Anger pair well, pair well with the Offering? Because the Offering draws a lot of cards, meaning we can get the Anger back to our hand, basically. We don't need the energy from it, that's true, though. Maybe not that good of a pairing. I feel like with the Blessing of the Forge, I do, in fact, want to upgrade Offering first. Play the offering, and then use the blessing. Upgrade nine cards. And it was sentries first, so I guess we totally could have gotten away with Evolve here. Oh well. It's not offering. Forge Pot, this turn's not too bad. I could block 8 to deal 11 to all of them. Deal 20 to this one. Two strikes kills it next turn. Or we can stick with the plan of offering next turn into Forge Potion. Upgrade at least 3 strikes. Or we could maybe even just not use the Forge Potion. The strike twice and then offering. That way the strikes go back into the draw pile. and an attack would kill here. Nice. Okay, that went very well then. We leave with 39 health. We kept our Forge Potion. We get an early question card, which I love to see early because, you know, then there's more card rewards that it can affect. Offered a second Anger. Do I want two Angers? Not really. Do I want second wind power through? Yes. Yes, I do. Now we take either an Evolve or a um, Dark Embrace, and things are really good. Hmm. Just not getting the draws you need when you need them. I think it's really easy to overestimate your draw order a lot of the time. It's part of what makes removing cards so essential, is that um, you're less likely to draw bad sets of cards if you remove all the bad cards. But there could be other little moment-to-moment -moment decisions, like when to use a potion that can really make the difference. What's in the box? The Eternal Feather. 
healing us at rest sites. I'd love to see an early Eternal Feather. Take Upgrade, then Event, or Event, then Upgrade. Take the event first? Question mark. Hmm. Well, that's a bit of a bummer. Brimstone's gone. Apotheosis we can't buy. Ink bottle's gone. And more importantly, we get no reward from this floor. Sakoti says, I remember you saying that you were starting to learn the lesson of take the evolve slash dark embrace when you see them as opposed to when they fit perfectly in the deck. Why didn't we follow that logic this run? Uh, in short, because we had a more immediate life or death life or death decision before us. Go into an elite fight with not enough attack cards or take a thunderclap. And I chose to take thunderclap specifically so that we would have more damage when it came to the critical upcoming elite fight. If we take Evolve there and then roll Gremlin Knob with a bad draw order, then we simply die from full health. So we had to look at the worst case scenario and plan for that. I do like Anger upgrade here as our next upgrade. Anger or even Thunderclap for three more damage to all enemies. Although, I, I yeah, I do think Anger's upgrade is better here. Do I want a Strength Potion? Strength Potion helps me not die right now, but costs me, in the long run, a third of a Relic. But fighting Burning Elite seems like a good idea. 60% Potion chance, though. I'm going to say no to Strength Potion, but that might backfire. We do have a lot of health. Can you sell cards at the shop? I wish. No, you have to pay the merchant to take your cards. He is a jerk. Okay, Grumlin Knob is sufficiently threatening. I'm going to have Blessing of the Forge here to make sure this isn't a three-turn fight. Or to make sure it is a three-turn fight, more accurately. Good. get a kunai, giving us dexterity if we play three attacks in one turn. And if we want the first exhaust card we see, then Burning Pact is it. Uh, alternately, we might want to consider Combust here so that we can kill the slime boss more easily. I don't hate Infernal Blade either. Could use a bit more damage. It's mystery damage, but sometimes mystery damage is the best damage. I think I'm taking this Burning Pact. Exhaust cards, draw cards. A very valuable mid to late game ironclad effect. These are both 27. Bash Anger Strike does 29, so we can kill one of the eights. Let's kill the one with 18 health. Gets his kunai too. Good. I feel like I've started going for Act 1 Burning Elites more recently. I think a little bit more recently. Started to appreciate how much it can hurt if you do not lock it, if you don't free up your pathing before you get to Act 2 and 3. It's so hard to do the Burning Elite Act 2. So if you don't do it Act 1, you're almost always doing it Act 3. That's uh, that's quite a downside at times. Feels like we do need a bit more damage for Hexa. Although I do like Shrug. I do like Shrug. I'm worried about Hexa Ghost. The Subtle, thank you so much for the four months of support. And Charnel with two months in the Prime sub. Thank you both.
Bad at Game says, I do find myself trying to get block up to avoid taking damage at the cost of dealing damage. And that can really turn into a spiral. Many of the enemy encounters are designed in such a way so that if you full block and sacrifice damage, it ends up costing you more health later in the fight because the enemy is able to scale up and threaten you even more. No, I think I need this Twin Strike. Oh, it is Slime Boss. That's right, not Hexaghost. Slime Boss. Yes, this will be easier than Hexaghost. No wonder I'm afraid of Hexaghost. I'm building for Slime Boss. Just open with Offering ain't bad. I'll wait on it, though. I want to draw my Bash. Okay, we'll wake up here. Bash, Anger, Wind Strike, Nye. Defend, defend? Yeah. I'll do it. Maybe that should have just been triple defense. Either way, now is our chance for the big damage. Let's do it. Bash, cleave, twin strike, definitely. There we go. That's more like it. Got second win next turn, or I can Burning Pack try to draw the Anger now. I could just deal nine. Or I can deal six and have one more turn of Volt in case they don't kill next turn. I should have T-clapped first if I'm T-clapping now. Could have killed with Explosive Pot if I hadn't Thunderclapped, I think. But I did, so I can't. But the Voln did matter, I think. Right? Yes, we have an exact kill here because of that Thunderclap. Okay, that worked out. We get Vajra for plus one strength. And that's really good with all of these little attacks we have. We get our Emerald Key. We get a Battle Trance. Or a Pommel Strike, but I'm taking Battle Trance. Dr. Noodles, thanks for gifting a sub to Bad at Game. Hope you found some tips here from our helpful chat room that can point you in the right direction when it comes to your Spire play. Thirty-three health going into Slime Boss. It's a little questionable. It's definitely a little questionable. I think I'm going to upgrade the Battle Trance, but we are not guaranteed to win this fight. What's our damage plan? Anger. Anger is the damage plan, primarily. Burning Pact upgrade could work, too. But I'd rather have the upgrade on the zero-cost draw. Resting was also a very valid option there. Completely valid option. YOLO. Hmm. That's not good. That's not where I wanted Bash to be. But I do want all damage in the draw pile here. That's a bad split. 
Nothing I can do about it, though. We have to. What's that saying about bottom decked my bash? Yeah, that's what happened here. Bash strike is less damage than triple strike. Triple strike is also kunai, although there's not exactly a lot of blocks in the draw pile. This is why we wanted the damage. Yeah, damage all day. Every day. We good, we good. I'm pretty sure. You want to use this now? I can't split you, right? 32 still doesn't split. So we're taking this hit whether we like it or not. And this does 11. So yeah, we can play this here. It's with the explosive pot, which I'm going to use since we're in grave danger. Everything will be fine. Is there any reason to use that now, though? Not strictly speaking, no. Pliny with the nine months of support. Thank you, thank you. 20 does split. 11 is reasonable. Yeah, let's just use this. Okay, I don't think we have any bricks, actually. I think we're pretty good here. I'll take it. We are alive and through the slime boss fight. So we were able to get that upgrade on the battle trance, which I'm pretty happy with. And now we're offered a feed. Very hard to turn down a feed. Just have to kill a foe with it, and it increases our max health permanently. We already have a healing relic, which makes it even better. Limit break could double our strength from one to two. Demon form would be a lot more than that, but it's very expensive. Will it be easy to set up feed? I think so. We have ridiculous card draw. And we're offered Slaver's Caller, Calling Bell, Philosopher's Stone. Hmm. Slaver's Caller is energy during boss and elite fights only. Calling Bell gives us relics right now, plus a curse. And the Philo Stone gives us energy, but makes all the enemies have more strength. This one often has uh, quite a bite to it, I find. So it's hard to want to take Philo Stone, but it's not terrible here. I do think a fourth energy is very good in any deck that has A, Kunai, and B, lots of card draw. We have both. So more energy goes a long way. Yeah, I think I actually might like the Philo Stone over the color here. Really don't like the Hallway Combats of Act 2 on only three energy, especially in this deck. Yeah, Philo Stone into birds. It could happen. Although we're not that afraid of birds. I'm going to take it. Take the so-called easy energy this time. Pretty sparse looking axe. Not a lot of elites or anything. I'm thinking we do something like this. Rest site here, rest site here. Second elite there. We can take some events if we want to. It's not too bad. There's no path with more rest sites. Or more elites. There's no better shop either. Ugh. That's a kind of bad act. Lose more in Act 2 than anywhere else. I think that's pretty typical. Act 2 is where... There they are. Act 2 is where the enemies really step up their game. And you have to... Make stuff happen quickly. Or suffer. Okay, this is definitely punishing me. Although... Not that much worse than... I think 3 energy would be here. 
Contemplating distilled. We might miss the feed if I play distilled here. We're taking 12 currently. Don't love taking 12. That said, I'm not convinced that the distilled chaos would substantially improve things. It might. Offering would be garbage, though. No, I don't think it's worth it. We're just going to down a bird. And block for 12. Does playing Chaos Potion after Battle Trance work? Yes, they're not being played. Yeah, we would have lost feed if I'd done that, so... I think I made the right call. However, I think now it is correct to do... Because this looks like fresh garbage. Okay, a slight improvement. Not really, though. Hmm. Didn't hit the second wind. Or power through, rather. We did hit the second wind. Well, I wouldn't call that ideal. But it will do. Disarm. Counters Philo Stone. Give me that. Absolutely essential that we take at least one disarm. And our first Feel No Pain is also here. We've already got Offering, Second Wind, Burning Pact, Disarm. It's a good Feel No Pain. And I'll probably just remove a card. Although a potion ain't too shabby either. Now nah, I'll just remove a card. Minus one strike, please. Why not down another bird instead of double defend? Because the birds take four hits to knock out of the air. I'm pretty sure I could only do three. How about flex? That's actually a pretty good flex. Okay. I'll try a flex. Temporary two strength. Or if we upgrade it. Oh, come on. Ow. Yeah, sometimes you do get draws like this, and there's nothing you can do about it. But draws like this are very rare. Actually, there's not nothing you can do about it. You can remove strikes is what you can do about it. Ow. Feel yes pain. Feel every pain. I don't want to take any more damage. I have no more money anyway. That could be running away with some of our money. Yeah, doesn't even get away with it. Well, my hit points. We do have two potions at least. Didn't have to pay money for that flex. But I am allowed to take a heavy blade. Guess I'll do that. It's not the best card in the world, but it does hit just hard enough that, well, sometimes it's what you need. For example, I can eat the cultist thanks to that heavy blade. Although, should I have played Feel No Pain? Maybe. Maybe. Spooky. Very spooky. Take one dazed. Eight by two. Okay, no problem. It's only 16. Although, we're going to get attacked again in a moment here. Looks like we're playing Offering next turn. 11 by 2. Bit spookier. Ba. 
bonk. Okay, potions preserved. Hit points doing okay. Do we want a true grit? Kind of, only kind of. I want a true grit plus is what I want, but this is not a true grit plus. So I don't think so. We're fighting the champ. I already have burning pack though. No, I think we're good. Kunai and burning pack should beat champ. Why so spicy though? Three, thirty-four. Attack potion could potentially eat the mystic and full block. I guess that's probably worth it. I don't like using my attack potion before an elite here. But I don't like this situation either. So I'm going to do it. And I'll be glad that I did. Can't eat Centurion, right? We have, again, 34, 47. No, not enough. Not enough. Take that, you stinky mystic. Normally, the Centurion has a move they can do where they block for the mystic. If the Mystic's dead, it turns into a times three multi-hit instead. More strength. Bot weakness looks very good here. Permanent strength. That's excellent. Whirlwind wasn't too bad either. Now we get healed 15 at the fire, bringing us up to 47. That's a pretty good total. That said, I am strongly considering a rest here for even more health, just to ensure that whatever this elite is, we don't perish to them. If I was going to upgrade a card, I think it would be the Flex, which would improve our damage substantially if, if and only if we draw the flex alongside the good stuff. But if we don't draw those together, then I think we're going to want the hit points. I'm going to take some hit points here. Let's see how our elite fight goes. It is slavers. We did get flex on turn one. And a lot more besides. Okay, this looks pretty good, actually. This is definitely what we wanted to draw. More or less. Maybe less. Hmm, maybe wanted a burning pack first. Oh well, we do full block, it looks like. Oh, we kill you, actually. Even better. Good, okay. Good. Should have played the second win instead of the Feel No Pain, though. Or should have used the Energy Potion, perhaps. But otherwise, I like how that went. Quite a lot. We do Bash Cleave, Anger, Power Through, or we can skip something. Actually, does that kill? 12 plus, yeah, a ton. You're just dead, right? Good. Don't even need the Power Through. Okay, that went very well, and our reward is Obscene. The Pocket Watch. Been a little while. If we play three or fewer cards on our turn, draw three extra cards at the start of the next turn. So we spend one turn playing big, expensive setup cards, and the next turn we get a huge draw. That's going to make our flex into a much better card. Alt. Today is the day I must settle the score with the murderer of my beloved pet noodles. Until then, you may not pass. I'm all for a good cause, sir. Four noodles. Clash. Clang. Pow. We lost the bet, but at least we weren't gouged by a lance. Rip noodles. And there's the Art of War. Art of War pocket watch. Love it. 
Love those two things together. Play a few powers and a block card. Then on the next turn, draw eight cards and get bonus energy. It's good. It's really good. I'm ready to go event hunting. I feel like we got the important stuff. Let's check some events out. We could get uh, Coliseum knobs, or we could just get some free money here. I had a shop coming up. I would take the Regret Curse, but I'll just take 50 gold since I don't know when the next shop is. Event number two, match and keep. 12 cards, match him to keep him. I'd love an exhum. So if I could find, oh, there it is. I'll take an exhum. Thanks for the rare card, Gremlin. Uh, I don't want Clumsy, though. Or Regrets. Not really Body Slam, either. Yeah, just give me that uh, Exhum, and I'll be on my way. And we do get a shop with a Dark Embrace. Seems good. Could play Strike Anger, or I can Pocket Watch Art of War. I think that's what I'll do here. Pocket Watch Art of War. Uh, we'll play the Dark Embrace, too. So again, Art of War here, but not uh, not Pocket Watch this time. Take three more. And now... Next turn's gonna suck, though. Shoot. Unless I can kill. Maybe I can just kill next turn. Nope. Guess we'll pocket watch, try to get back to feed then. Ow. That was art feed. Dead branch. All right. Don't mind having my run get a bit easier. Dead branch, of course, says whenever we exhaust a card, add a random card to our hand. So we now have pocket watch, dead branch, feed. Seems pretty good. And now I almost feel bad for the champ. Almost. I could probably upgrade feed here. Let's just do it. What's my estimated win rate with Dead Branch on Clad? Probably about 95%. And I think I owe the chat a dad joke. I think I do. Good. 
Did you hear about the ironclad who got into politics? He was ousted for corruption. Can exhume a uh, spot weakness, actually. Do that. Looks good. say that, champ. My worst could be pretty bad. Oh, yes, it can. Just make your own corruption. Is in fact that easy. But I can't spot weakness if you're not attacking me. Execute is next turn. Let's just... Wait. Silly ironclad, the champ has no weakness. We have kill here, but we can do better than just killing. We can eat. GG. Champ gets nommed, and we get four hit points. We also get a limit break, which is way better than last time we saw it, because we have flex and spot weakness and exhume. Or we could just take another exhume. Notably, not here is corruption. I think I like Limit Break over Impervious Exhume. Immolate, kind of a distant fourth place here. Let's take the Limit Break. Pandora's Box versus Mark of Pain. Pandora's Box would transform four strikes and four defends, which could be huge. We could take double strength potions with Sacred Bark. Or we could just have more energy. More energy is pretty good. I wouldn't call this a bad Mark of Pain. I'd prefer Coffee Dripper, certainly. There could be Corruption in the box. There could be a lot of good things in the box. I think uh, Pandora's Box is also really good here. Let's try the Pandora's Box. Give me those transformations. There is no corruption here, just a feel no pain, spot weakness, impervious, and reaper. Bummer. No, those, that's not a bummer. Those are very good, of course. Those cards are excellent. Not what we were hoping for, but definitely excellent. We already got the Burning Elite down, so why don't we path to the late shop. Something like that. Go to an early shop also. If we get 999 gold, I would do it. Yeah, we could fight only one elite. Yeah, I like that. Any other paths that look half decent? We could do this elite, this elite. 
No shop, though. Nah. We good. Go feel no pain, shockwave. Feed only works if you finish the fight with feed, so I couldn't have fe fed on this Darkling, for example. Nor can I exhume feed and multi feed here. I can only get one. Unfortunately. So we go to 98 health. Get a second Reaper, which I will click on. And I'll take the dupe pot over the energy pot. I like the ancient potion for the heart. Winding halls. Lose five max health or receive two madnesses. I guess madnesses are not bad here. With double feel no pain, dark embrace, and dead branch. So let's take two madnesses. Why not? Glowing Tesseract we'll look at. It could be good things here like Apotheosis or Master of Strategy is good. Bandage Up is Dece. Panic Button's pretty good. Purity is actually insane. Get in here, Purity. If we skip these. Yeah, Purity is too good. We get to exhaust cards in our hand, turning them, of course, into new cards. Better more powerful cards. Get disarmed, friend. Oh, you're back to normal strength? I see. Concerning. Upgraded second wind. Definitely. Definitely very good. Exhaust all the cards in our hand. Do some other stuff. You know the rest. Make new cards. Those cards block themselves. Everything's great. Sentinel's not bad either, but it's it's compared to the second wind, it's not even close. Uh-oh. We made a slight mistake here got block and it's cursing me. That is not good. There we go. That is good.
We've had first Reaper, yes, but what about second Reaper? That's good. Fight is kind of like a delicate dance at times. I don't want to disturb it as long as it's doing something that we can block. There's the big heal. And here's the feed. Perfect timing, feed. Nice. Full health. Uppercut plus or whirlwind plus. I don't have a secondary source of weakness, right? Just the shockwave? Let's take this uppercut. Uh, yeah, I'm going this way for the shop. Grab my recall now. Run looking a lot more breathable now, definitely. It was pretty spooky initially. All right, again. Fire does nothing this turn. Let's go for another disarm, I guess. Lower that strength down to next to nothing. Then boost our own strength. Large numbers. Let's try, nerd. Killed that turn. Would prefer to feed if possible. Or at least Reaper. Some of my health back. We get the feed. Guria! We can gain strength at rest sites up to three times. I recalled early, meaning we can indeed lift the full three times for three strength. That's huge. That's really good. Is Dead Branch just auto win with Clad? It's not quite that brainless, but kind of also. It makes the run a lot easier, that's for sure. But no, it's not auto win. You have to know which cards to play of the ones that are randomly generated. Uh, and especially with Corruption, you also have to know when to stop playing cards sometimes. Would a relic that says all cards created during combat are upgraded be busted? I think that'd be a really cool relic. Maybe as a rare relic. Gotta take the blue key. Don't take that hourglass. As much as I would like to. And now the giant head. Greetings, Mr. Head. Let's just let the... Pocket watch, do the rest here. And again.
Madness plus dual wield can do fun stuff. Although not if the madness hits the dual wield. There's actually only three cards. Well, I'll take eight more cards next turn. Because why not? Keep them coming. Flash, my beloved. That is not enough. Maybe if I do pot the feed, hold on. Yeah, do pot feed gets me out of here and gives me four max health. I'm gonna do that. Makes my life way easier. Secretly fruit juice. Took the uppercut, don't need clothesline. What's the shop got? Another offering, another heavy blade, toolbox for a card on turn one, for a card remove. Actually, not a bad offering. This is not a bad offering. Do like a toolbox as well. Is Guria considered better than Vajra or Dubudal? I wouldn't say, generally speaking, no. You have to invest uh, upgrades into the Gurya, and it provides no immediate effect. I think I'm going to take the offering here. It's really good. Really good. We have so much health to spend, and it gives us so much card draw. Surely it is worth it. And black. Oh wait, I should have exhumed feed here. The multi-fed. Still can, right? We still have an exhum. Uh, hold on. Hmm. Yeah, I would like to multi-feed here. Okay. gonna draw a feed. I can't play though. It's even more foolish. Hopefully I have so much hard draw. Is Dark Embrace necessary with Branch? It is if you want to see the cards you actually own, like feed. If you're okay with just any old card, then no, you don't need it. But I am not, in fact, okay with any old card. <clears throat> I want the feed.
Lower Dark Embraces. Now we wait. There's a zoom. Uh, where's the, there it is. Dumb. I think Dead Branch could make another exhum. Um, but I'll play either Exhum or Reaper, whichever one I find first. Exhum. So we get the triple feed here. Easily worth it. Very tasty. Very demon form or very power through plus. I think it's even for him. Seems all right. Hmm. Okay, that's better. Health goes down, health goes up. Can't explain that. Getting dangerously close to killing. Go for it. This maybe not that close. Gambler's Brew is very good when you have so many cards in your deck. So I'll lose Power Pot? No, Power Pot could be Corruption. We'll lose the Ancient Potion. And 
face the Reptomancer. Bonk. Beautiful. Try. Delicious. Bremic Fish doesn't do much this late in the run. Nine gold per card we add, but it's floor 48. How many cards could we possibly add? Surely not too many. All right, our first Axe Reboss is the Bird Nerd. Bird Nerd gonna put in the word. could be a multi-feed fight. Realistically, if we want to eat one of the birds, we should play it now so we can exhume it later. So I'm just going to lead with a feed. And then not play power through because I want the pocket watch. We'll play the demon form. We'll play some of the feel no pains. Let's just go demon form second wins. Screw it. Okay, there's another exhum. Okay, okay, that's worth playing too. Barricade and trench. That's really worth playing. Barricade Impervious in Trench. Can't actually play all of that, though. Let's just do Power Through Impervious. War Cry the Barricade on top. Make barricade free like you do. I think I gotta kill the bird now. Fifteen by four. That's quite a number, friends. Never mind, I'm the one with the big number. Again. 
There's corruption. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of it though. I'm crazy like that. Aha! One, a corruption in hand is worth two in the bush. Or something. Dinner time. Wait. No. I forgot was wrong. I think that was Sword Boomerang first, actually. Uh. Whatever. You're dead. Plenty of hit points here. I don't need more hit points. Probably. Weakness, limit break. Pummel this nerd. Flash almost worked. Strength. Airspeed. Mmm, donut. Decca. Delicious. Dr. Noodles, thank you so much for the gifted sub to DS Twitch. Welcome to this cozy sub club. We deal 2017 damage in 2024. What does it mean? And have I been here before? Get our third and final lift. Now we have four points of strength by default. No mummy hand for us, though we can take the orange pellets. Orange pellets are OP. Whenever you play a power attack in the same, and a skill, excuse me, in the same turn, remove all of our debuffs, including vulnerable, frail, and weak, like the heart might inflict. I think that's probably just enough to make the end game nice and cozy here. For example, we could also play Berserk and remove the negative effects of the Berserk. So long as we play an attack. Okay, nothing else to play. 
We can also keep the strength from flex using a similar technique. There we go. Oh. You don't say. Kill the shield right now. Almost. Kill you instead. Or maybe both. If I just kill them both. Sounds good. Alright, full health. Could have had 150 health if we eat them both, but 142 will be more than enough for the Corrupt Heart here. With a power potion in hand, we have an assuredness that nothing terrible will happen to us next turn. Could play Iron Wave, Feel No Pain, Shockwave. I think I might just go Feel No Pain, Shockwave. Lean into Art of War Pocket Watch here. There's also a chance I might want to play the new card. No. But yeah, we'll have 10 cards next turn. Eight from draw, two from new cards being generated from Dead Branch here. With one bonus energy, I think that's worth it. This turn, to remove the debuffs, all we have to do is play a power, an attack, and a skill. We'll go Feel No Pain, Madness, which hits Reaper, because of course it does. And then Reaper will remove the debuffs, or Blood for Blood, too. Then we could play Flame Barrier, which seems good. And Slash or Second Wind. Flame Barrier, we don't get to exhume anything. Or if I second win, rather, we don't get to exhume anything. I think that's fine. Um, and I probably want a Power Potion, too. I should have done that earlier. I'll take a Demon Form. Because why not? Looking very, very good here. Madness hits uppercut, maybe? Yeah. And then exhume. Let's exhume this. Double tap the headbutt, heading, butting the limit break, and the exhume. So I can limit break, exhume, limit break. We're gonna go to 96 strength next turn. I think that's pretty good. Actually, more than that 104 strength. Spin strike alone caps damage. Looks like we're pretty good here. Okay. 
goes to you. Very toasty. Lash for the win. Lash deck wins again. GG. Another W for Clash. GG. GG. Twist yet. GG. Does strength ever cap? Yeah, it's a limit at uh, 999. A few other things cap at 999 as well. Metallicize, plated armor, block, dexterity. Focus, I, I think. At what point in that run did I decide things were won? I think when we found the dead branch is when I got really, really confident. And when we found the pocket watch, I was breathing a sigh of relief because we were in the easy part of the run. Meow, yeah, what Twitch chat has it been done? Aspire sleepeth, but I shall not. The streak now stands at six. We've had some really good streaks lately. It's like we've been consistently getting up uh, above five, which I'm really happy with overall. And I believe our ironclad win rate is trickling upwards ever so slightly. So I'm definitely feeling good at the moment about where we are with clad. Is negative strength capped? I would assume it also caps at negative 999, but that's a good question. Is Dead Branch an auto win on the clad? Almost, but not quite. You're not guaranteed to find cards that exhaust, although it's very likely. And you're not guaranteed to get cards that are useful, although again, it's very likely. Is poison the only thing that doesn't cap? I believe there is no cap on um, inspiration, vigor, that's what it's called. There's no cap on vigor. The effect given to you by Akabeko and the card Wreath of Flame, such that you can stack over 999 additional damage on your next attack with Wreath of Flame. Intangible shouldn't cap. I imagine most of the damage statuses can go over 999. For example, fire breathing, I, I imagine, could go over 1,000. Probably. You have more than 1,000 echo form. That's the important question. How many echo forms is the upper limit? All right, Twitch chat, coming up next, we're going to move things over to some Against the Storm and continue our cozy Queen's Hand playthrough of that game. Before that happens, though, it is, of course, break time. Got to refill the legs, got to stretch the water. So I'll be back in a few minutes for some cozy, cozy Against the Storm. Back in a few, everybody. Don't go nowhere.
All right, Twitch chat, the wait is over. We are switching games here. Gonna play some Against the Storm. Currently one of my favorite non-spire roguelites. Welcome, welcome. Part settlement builder, part roguelite. This cozy experience is a great time. We're currently playing through a session of the Queen's Hand mode, a permadeath mode that's unlocked after beating sort of the main mode of Against the Storm. In this mode, we have but a single overworld cycle until the end of the bar at the bottom here to reach and break an adamantine seal, requiring us to get 105 seal fragments, of which we currently have 50, as well as requiring a really difficult challenge The Against the Storm um, tutorial vid came out on the Variety YouTube today. That's good stuff. Finally, uh, I know that took a while, but I'm glad it's finally here. I made a tutorial for the regular mode as well as a, a more detailed tutorial on how to play Queen's Hand mode specifically for those looking to elevate their challenge. I have to get a command created for that Against the Storm tutorial. I played Wildermyth. I don't think so. Yeah, I meant to. I meant to mention when when that uh, video hit the the variety of YouTube, but it did take a while. So we saw two events. I think we're ignoring. That's right. Win with no one leaving to get two villagers. That's not terrible, actually. But hmm, I think would prevent us from settling in a key location which is right here between the Fishman Ritual Site and the Flooded Mines. This will be an extra challenging settlement, which means we should play it on an extra easy difficulty, just down on Viceroy. Actually, yeah, because that'll be less rep. Although we'll have... Less years. I think that's still fine. Oh, wait, no, I played Wildermyth on stream last month? Wait, am I confusing what Wildermyth is? I must be. Hmm. Is the Queen's Hand mode really that hard? It is pretty challenging. I know we've, we've done very well on the stream so far, but I still think it is quite challenging. Uh, so what, we're still going to get 15 machinery and 40 artifacts here? 40. That's a ton of artifacts. And a double royal resupply. I'd like to start with uh, lizards here. Lizards that come with six, uh, five amber is pretty good. Sad that we're already at zero embercation points, though. Oh, yes, yes. Now I'm remembering Wildermyth. The randomly generated, no, not randomly generated, the crowdsourced stories. I think the combat was kind of interesting there. But it definitely didn't pull my attention. Okay, so Viceroy Lizards, Double Penalty, Scarlet Orchard. This could be tough. I fully expect to have to build the Forsaken Altar and use it on this one, and that's okay. 
let's uh, let's embark. I think lizards are going to be good for no orders as well. On no orders, it's imperative that you get some reputation <clears throat> early. And lizards aren't very hard to get to the point where they can get your first little bit of reputation. So, orders are disabled. And we get more hostility per villager, although no hostility per year. Ancient excavation sites can be found here. Again, the modifiers are no orders, but more hostility per villager. 12 hostility per villager base. Um, no hostility per year. I think on average that actually ends up being less total hostility, especially if we control our population, which I would like to do. The trees on this map give a good amount of wood, plus a chance for copper ore pigment and plant fiber. Kind of an odd mix. Kiln. Kiln is quite good. That would allow us a fuel multiplier by burning it down into coal. What about cookhouse, though? Cookhouse can make skewers, which are comparatively easy to make and make lizards very, very happy. There's also lumber mill for good planks. All of these are good, actually. I do think that securing happiness is one of the most important things so that we can get our initial blueprints. So I'm going to prefer to take Cookhouse, I believe. This is a heat building, right? Yeah, so lizards are happy working here, and the skewers they make will also make them happy. Although I could wait. I'm not going to be able to make this immediately anyway, right? Let's wait and find out what we have the ingredients for by looking at the first Dangerous Glade. We also get, of course, our first uh, cornerstone here. A passive perk that helps you out on your playthrough. We could go for quicker villagers. We could go for more different way to get quicker villagers. A bonus for felling trees, or hostility reduction for each loyalty choice. Which includes um, opening caches. And I think on this difficulty level, they're particularly easy to open. That said, 10 Amber might be better for helping with the first Dangerous Glade. I'm just going to take 10 Amber here. Since none of those perks feel all that good. Virtual256, thank you for the prime sub and the 30 months of support. Yeah, loyalty would mean sending the cash to the city using tools. That's correct. That is correct. Yeah, Viceroy is four, apparently. What are our modifiers? Blight Rot Cysts grow slower during the drizzle. That's kind of bad. Off-road speed is decreased. 
Gathering speed is decreased. Quaking bog's pretty bad. Hunger storm is no biggie, as long as you have food. Downpour is pretty tough, but hostility five should be easy enough to avoid. Not too bad overall. Started with very low food on this one. We'll have to actually start gathering food shortly. Definitely a tough start here. We don't have that many villagers. We don't have that much food. We don't have much of anything, really. We do at least have enough fuel for the meantime. Initial houses are up. That's right, you can't favor until you have at least two species. Lizards are resilient to resolve changes, though. I think they'll be in great shape overall. Remember, we only have, uh, I think, two minute storms here. Yeah, storm is two minutes long means we'll have shorter overall years, but also less difficulty in dealing with stuff, I imagine. Uh, let's cut into the glade then, as well as look at... Oh yeah, <clears throat> there's no orders to look at, that's right. Well, let's cut into the glade. Arumba says, on this biome, I like putting down copper paths along the main warehouse edge. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Yeah, we already have 10... Um, 10 copper ores, so I think I'll uh, follow that suggestion. This is ultimately a path that everybody has to walk down. An open vault. Lots more copper. Large meat nodes, large reed nodes, small berry nodes, and one cache, which contains lots of food, which is really good in case we starve. Takes 15 tools. Okay, so we're paying full price. With five bricks, we can bury the entrance and get points, or we can perform a ritual. No, we can't. I guess points, points are good anyway, right? This is easily worth our five bricks. That said, uh, all woodcutters and gatherers get a minus 12 penalty to global resolve. That's not too bad. Just just woodcutters and gatherers. Super worth. Okay, so that's a pretty good first glade. We also do see Drizzle Water Geyser. Which makes me really want to take the cookhouse. Yeah, let's take cookhouse. Uh, we can't use this herbalist camp, right? We have large... We want trapper's camp currently. Two different ways to use fertile ground is nice, but I might take kiln here. Yeah, I think we take kiln here. Improve our fuel consumption. Also lets us make bricks and a jerky, which the lizards do like, actually. That's a, a useful food. Okay, yeah. Supplier can make planks and flour. Stamping mill can make copper bars. 
But I think this wants to be supplier, giving us our first method of plank production. Okay, let's get foraging. Don't need as many woodcutters at this moment. And in a moment, newcomers will be arriving, and the trader will be here soon, too. Do I plan on playing Into the Breach in the near future? No, I feel like I've completed Into the Breach. I've done everything I want to do with that game. Oh yeah, we didn't actually build the trading post yet. Let's get that up now. Oh, whoops. At least we get three people. Give me the people that are bringing bricks. We'll have one harpy and one human. Uh, and let's have a harpy be the hearthkeeper for now. Cool. Don't mind harpies at all. Oh yeah, and our uh, thing. Hunter gatherers. Camp production is increased by 100%. That's one of my favorites. I'm going to take that. Uh, that means we get double yield from food camps like the small foragers camp. The dewberry bush. It means these reed fields are huge amounts of resource. It doesn't affect our wood cutting, but everything else gets a bonus. Any game where pies lead to a win is a good game. You know, I don't disagree with that. Not at all. Let's see. So we're going to want that out here. And a warehouse eventually. Okay. I think we missed the timing on Zorg by a little bit there, but it's not too big a deal. Any trade routes that I def def desperately want? I don't think so. We mostly have nothing at the moment. It's going to be a real struggle to make anything currently. Yeah, no beavers means no guild house. Although I think we can still get a uh, trade hub, right? That's still allowed. Hello, Hello Zorg. I do have some amber for you. And you have planks for me, which I desperately need. 20 planks, please. 10 bricks. Uh, do I dare buy food? We're really low on food. It's not a very good deal, though. I don't think so. I think with our camp upgrade, we're going to be fine. Thank you, Zorg. All right, we have nine people housed, one person unhoused. We got the plus two global resolve. Okay, this is looking good. With the planks, we can build the supplier, start making more planks. Um, supplier, I guess, can go right here in the center.
be nice if I could get anybody above the resolve threshold to actually make me stop. Oh, I see. That's also gatherer, technically. Some planks. Keep us at 20. Uh, kiln takes bricks. We can make that too, and that can save us wood. It'll also make the lizards pretty happy. Any self imposed challenges this cycle? I didn't put any on me for this one. Thought about no pause, but decided not to. Queen's hand mode is already pretty self-imposed, right? True. Okay, now we can favor the lizards and actually make some reputation here. Let's have a lizard keeper to make that a little bit easier. The harpy job. Okay, okay. And can I make a warehouse? Not quite. <clears throat> Need fabric, which we don't have a way to make. Currently, we need lots of wood. Do enable this. Limit 25 for now. Let's start. Uh, let's enable and prioritize coal burning. Oh, yeah, and we can make the cookhouse. We haven't needed the ingredients for this yet. No, we would need mushroom. Mushroom's not happening. But am I correct in that the drizzle wing nest alone gives us skewers? Because it has meat. Yeah, meat and eggs make skewers, so yes, that's cool. That's really good. Lizards, you are not happy enough. What happened? We have one unhoused lizard. I don't think that makes enough of a difference, but might as well house them. Okay, food is going up with hunter-gatherers. This is looking good. I can solve this. Stop woodcutting, start kilning. There we go. It'd be nice if I could get to a blueprint before the year's up. I don't think we can, though. Early next year. Which is pretty good, actually. On a no-orders map, I've had year five no points yet before. Which is uh, not a fun situation to be in. Although this... No, hold on. That harpy goes back there. They're going to want to stay there anyway. During the storm. Going to get minus eight to everybody during the storm, which is perfect, actually. Could stay just happy enough. No major problems. All right, we have nothing to build, so you do that. So that's not getting built now, but whatever. Ooh. Yeah, getting the first few blueprints is the hardest on a no orders map, I agree. Certainly the case. Oh, 
Wait, am I not allowed to build the sacrificial altar? Interesting, that's only a higher difficulty thing. Curious. Most curious. Have to be on prestige. Didn't realize that. Might have been a good reason to play prestige one. Hard to do trade routes at the moment. I'm down for generous gifts. Generous gifts is quite good in my experience. Let's take generous gifts. Frequent patrols is also okay. We already have minus 10 because we already took one loyalty choice. Actually, that's not too bad. And I'll surely be shipping more stuff. What map modifier do I find the hardest? Um, no orders is pretty tough. I think no trading is harder than no orders. A little bit. Just a bit. Four people or four people. Looks like we're shorter on food than we are on the other stuff. And I do want more harpies and lizards. That can get us more early reputation. Speaking of, do we ever get a second hearth up yet? Not yet. We have exactly the right amount of people to level up this hearth one more time. So let's do that. Oops. Um, I need to walk corner. Yeah. Decorate the crap out of this place. And there's our point of reputation. Good. Ranch. We can use the reeds to make the food in the ranch. Lizards are specialized at the ranch as well. And it's a drizzle water building. Yeah, ranch. Ranch with drizzle water is huge here. Excellent. Let's put the ranch right next to this one. Although I see that we need to make some fabric here at the crude, crude workstation. Hmm. <clears throat> Get to it then. Ranch is a renewable source of both eggs and meat, meaning we can use the ranch to make unlimited skewers. Now we have a level up hearth, meaning we get 10% uh, global production speed, which helps the ranch, because the ranch is really, really slow, unfortunately. But the water helps with that, too. So the combination of the water and the leveled hearth ought to be very effective here. Okay, the supplier has capped out on planks. No, they haven't, because they're about to make more. Kiln is busy work. Whatevs. Yeah, I like the little pagoda we made. It's kind of cool. What purpose does it serve? Okay, Lizard's still making rep for now. Alright, you two. So, please make meat from reeds and also eggs. Any particular priority to these?
Eggs are more efficient. Meat you get more at once. Let's cap the meat then and then prioritize egg making. I'm going to crank it all the way. Do we even get... Yeah, we do get Blight Rod, but it takes 64 units of water to get one cyst. Pfft, that's nothing. That's truly nothing. Good. And now I don't have enough pipes to hook up the other thing for now. That's fine. Bit of a slow start here, but what can we do? What can we do? Oh yeah, the humans are good at roots, right? Yeah, hold on, we can fix that. We only have the one, though. You should deliver. Oh, I see you're taking a rest. You're about to. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. Seems fine. Okay, so now that uh, warehouse gets built, you have no tools or anything, yeah. right? That's right. Okay, with the ranch running, we might just be able to make enough meat to actually do some stuff. We're also going to get the cookhouse going now. Go right here. They need more people. Although wood count is going up, that's a good sign. Want to build a second hearth soon-ish, now that we have 14 people living at the main hearth. Uh, new recruits should go to secondary hearths. That is the goal anyway. For this storm, I think we just have to stop favoring the lizards. That seems reasonable. and eggs and roots is fine. Although prioritize uh, what is it? Alt click? No. Shift click? Yeah. Use the eggs first. Alright. We could think about making trade routes happen soonish. This will make a makeshift post. Time for a new glade? Yeah, I guess it should be. Although we're not actually in position to open one at the moment. Nor are we in urgent need of opening one. I guess this one's the next one on the docket, maybe. We can get that one pretty quick. Let's do it. Yeah, we can get this one nice and quick. Here, you help out for a second. Storms are, sh are so short on this uh, difficulty level, it's kind of a weird feeling. So much use, so much more used to the long storms of prestige. All right, newcomers are here. Check the, and they're bringing a lot of stuff too. Check the perks first. Ah.
actually, whoa, a couple of really good options. Rudy Ground is just double wood production. So this is quite good. Harvesting and planting are slower, but we're not doing that this game. I also like cooking steam here. Food production speed is increased for every 50 units of drizzle water stored. We can inc improve our storage tanks pretty easily and store quite a bit, getting an easily 30% increased food production speed, which would help a lot on the ranch. Or lost supplies, lots of meat and grain for each time we complete a dangerous or forbidden glade event. That's pretty good too. I do like lost supplies for just the nice one-time bonus. I am really wondering about cooking steam though. Let me just double-check something. If I were to upgrade the geyser pump again, what does that cost? Two pipes that I don't have and ten planks. Okay. I really want to try this. Let's do it. Let's do it. Should we, yeah, keep chopping for the moment. Good luck, everyone. Escaped convicts. And a lot more reeds. Okay, this ranch is really going to go into overdrive. The stormwater geyser. If we persuade the convicts, we get five villagers, 20 planks, two ancient tablets. I don't have the ability to arrest them, so we'll persuade them. Sounds good to me. Join my cause, stinky convicts. Thanks. Yeah, we definitely need more workers, too. This time. You're fired. I guess you're fired, too. Oh, yeah, and take the newcomers. Five with 25 food, or four with 30 food. Like I need more people right now, so I'm gonna grab a larger number. Use the herbs and the meat. Do I just make another rain collector right now? I might as well. The storage capacity. Yeah, we are running out of space for houses. Uh, we're going to build the, the other hearth momentarily here. Need bricks, though. Did I make bricks? I don't think so. I can with the stone nodes over here. Okay, there's some stone. And the forger's camp is finally done. Let's make the berry camp. The Herbalist Camp. Also these. Also the Herbalist Camp. Okay, delete this. Confirm we have nothing to make bricks from. Oh, we have clay. Oh, that's right. The reeds have clay. Okay, make some clay. some clay bricks uh, and help the geyser pump fill up for a minute I'm gonna have so many people in a moment probably have to delete a rain collector oh yeah we can make them uh, sorry yes we can make those at the kiln excuse me hold on cancel cancel not here here. Oops. There we go. Thank 
having fun, everybody. You luck. Prisoners about to join us. The traitor should be here momentarily too, right? Yeah. Uh, actually, no. They're not, not even going to be here this year. That's a bummer. It's already year four. Oh, boy. At least I don't gain extra hostility per year. But I'm worried this is going to eat a lot of uh, cycle years from our overworld game. Oh, well. I guess that's just how it goes. Alright, how's the ranch doing? We have 40 reeds at the moment, so we need to gather more reeds. That's what we need. And then I think we're good to make a second ranch. So we need to cut some woods over there. Have I gotten much utility out of the trends panel? I have not. But I was already really used to playing without it. It does seem like it could be something that can help solve mysteries, which is kind of nice. Like what happened to my X resource? Okay, so now we're getting 30% production speed, meaning that this ranch is generating... Meat in 30 seconds? Holy crap. That is strong. Okay, we need to make that hearth sooner rather than later, right? Yes, that's correct. Has to be over here-ish. It's a bit of a bummer. Storm could be a little bit of a challenge. I think we'll be fine, though. Should have favored somebody for this year now. It's, like, too late. I guess we'll favor lizards for a minute. So I want to be able to favor somebody at the start of the storm, actually. So, yeah, we'll just cancel that. It's going to be the lizards that are the main driver of happiness once the cookhouse and such keep get uh, where they need to be. All right, you can be fired. You can be fired. Okay, good. We have lots of wood. We don't need woodcutters for a minute. Everything is fine. Everything is a-okay. Not at the cookhouse, I guess. To work at the ranch. the world's best fabric deal, but uh, an option. Do have one blight rod cyst. No biggie, no biggie. I can't build there anyway. Okay. Be easier to build over here, I guess, but all my stuff is over here. So I'll build over here.
Thank you, Rumba, for the words of wisdom. <laughs> excellent. Most excellent. Can't break open. Oh, yeah, we have this to get, but I have no parts now because of the ring collectors. Have to tear those down, huh? Probably. Hmm. I favor the harpies. Cut wood. Kind of. Cut some wood. The storm is already over, apparently. Dip it. Three pack of provisions is good. Although we're already at 24 people, so this won't be that many pack of provisions. I still think it's good. Ayo. Coats are nice. Plus three to plank production is not bad. Tools. Wait, we want tools. We want tools. Okay. That's what we want to start doing, is opening these caches. So how much for 15 tools? 34. All right. Uh, I don't have anything I can trade you, I guess. Boo. This run's terrible. Not having orders is, in fact, terrible. Why is life so hard? Although our food resource is going way, way up. That part's very good. Finrod, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the cozy sub club. Attack her as punishment. Yeah, I don't know about that. We're already at very high impatience. There might be the wee wee issue of instant loss. Staring us down. That seems like it could be a problem. Hmm. What on earth to do? Already year five. I guess, like I said, clothing does help. Anything else that helps in the short term? I don't think so. I'd like to start getting some rep from these harpies. have more people than we can meaningfully use, which is not good. Not enough blueprints. Oh, we should make the archaeologist's office, is what we should do. Let's get that up. Help me discover some stuff. Oh yeah, we can get bonuses per ancient tablet here as well. That's right. That is right. Yeah, archaeological discoveries would be pretty good. Although I think they require advanced resources to deal with. Okay, we can get hostility reduction if we're willing to use amber and planks. Hostility reduction per... Uh, 
uh, per ancient tablet we have. Do you sell fabric? Yeah, how much is six? How much do I get for four? Eight. All right. And then sell six for four. Deal. Profit. More newcomers. With some stuff. I don't know if I can even use the newcomers right now. I'll wait on them for a minute. Choppy choppy. Harpies are generating reputation. 0.1 per minute will at least get us get us another blueprint before the storm arrives. I'm gonna put the hearth here. Here. So we don't have to mark these trees. You know, you could take your breaks faster if you built a hearth here. Villagers. Hurry it up. There's our reputation. Hi. I can make flour already, and pie can be made with, made with eggs, so pie actually seems pretty good here, helping out the harpies and the humans. And it's another drizzle water building. Yeah, let's take it. It's a tiny little building, too, the brick oven. Um, okay, so we need to make flour now at the supplier. Hey, Harpy lady. You like a job? Please make the roots into flour. Please and thank you. Okay, now I do want more people. Some more of those coats. Almost. Come on. There we go. And then... Shelter there, big shelter here, park. Got to squeeze the decorations in. This is going to go to level two. A little bit more. Some barrels in here. Oops. There we go. All right, good luck, everybody. Build all that stuff. Gonna sell some barrels? Guess so. I guess so. And your job is to make pie out of eggs or meat. I guess use the berries first. Limit those to fifty. Lizard job in a moment. Doing on skewers. We have way too many skewers. Fired and then hired over here. Okay, that's boosting our resolve substantially. Actually, that should all be copper path, right? We got eight though.
Yeah, there'll be exactly 14 people with the right decorations. That's cute. Cool, okay, and that means the next group of newcomers has lots more goods with them. Start working towards that archaeological discovery. Uh, it's that one, right? Where's the office? Yeah, that one, okay. It's gonna be quite a dig through the trees here. This will start this direction. Been playing the heck out of Bertato? That's awesome. Uh, I think there's supposed to be more content coming from for Bertato. They mentioned new characters in the form of some kind of DLC thing. So I'm quite excited to see what that ends up looking like. Okay, things are going a little better now. How's the pie doing? Takes a minute to make. I don't have enough flour currently. Reasonable. All right, we should drop hostility down to two. Sure, we can survive at two here. Okay, fuel's holding up well. check something. To use the roots for pack of crops. Pack of provisions are similarly fine, actually. Worth considering making them just to sell. The provision packs, that is. Given that we have so much food at the moment. All the food's going up. Or is our large harvesting nodes doing? Close to depleted on this one. Lots left over here, though. Wall berries are almost gone. No dangerous glades out here. It's a bit tough. We could cut into this one, maybe. No. Yeah, roots are the only source of flour, so I don't really want to turn those into money via direct or indirect means. Buildings cost less is kind of nice. I'll take cheap construction. Sell the roots. Do sell that. Okay, we definitely need to get some points relatively quickly here. Currently we're earning reputation from two species. That's a good start. As the pie kicks in. Jerky's continually struggling, though. I wonder if we need another kiln. Let's make another kiln. Lizards will be really happy because we're meeting three uh, food needs for them. I didn't realize that every species liked pie when I made the brick oven, but heck yeah. Every species likes pie. Although that does give us some other issues. Namely, it's hard to keep everybody happy. We got a point. We got a point. You know, for once the advanced rain collector actually seems good. Just for the tank size, we can deconstruct the smaller rain collectors. Replace them with advanced rain collectors, having a larger... Oh, they take pipes? Son of a gun. They are terrible. <laughs> they take pipes. Nobody told me those took pipes. Ugh. Oh well. 
I'll just deconstruct one, get some parts, and then I can build something. Yeah, last time I ever click on that. Boo. Boo, I say. Well, I guess I can just make the rain collector again for cheaper. Let's do that. Leave a part that way. Put a warehouse over here. That way I can cut into this glade. Okay, lizards are making rep, but not the harpies. Might as well play favor the lizards then. 0.26 per minute. All right, we're getting somewhere now. We're at least getting somewhere. There's a lot of reputation to be had from the archaeological dig. What's up, Zorg? I'll take some pipes. Take all your pipes, in fact. Thank you. Okay, so we can connect the brick oven to the drizzle water. That's what I want, I think. That will make way more pie for us. Given that everybody likes pie, surely this is the smartest move of all time. We might as well get a third lizard in here. Tools, no tools. Bo. Tools, no tools. Not very impressed with the amount of goods they're bringing either. I thought they'd have more with the generous gifts. Oh, I didn't take generous gifts. Well, that explains a lot. Like, why are their bonuses so small? Because well, they're not giving us bonuses, that's why. Good talk. Good talk. Just sticking at 29 people for now seems reasonable. Impatience is getting awfully high, though. Might be time to switch to Human Hearthkeeper, actually. Let's do that. Um, that'll slow down the impatience gain. Which will hopefully make things a bit safer. I can sell the pie. Don't do it. The trap. We're swapping out the one lizard is going to make him unhappy now. Great. For you, lizard. Stuck at 0.95. Terrible. Yo, that's it. Figured that would happen. We have enough flour to make the pie. Turkey seems to be doing okay. Maybe not. Ancient tablets takes 30 planks. Good lord. I'll pay for that. And you know what? I guess I will take more people. Actually, hold on. Uh, wait until the storm arrives or something. Alright. You guys are done over there. Now coming over here. 
We need to start chain reacting value soon. You two are busy. Yeah, I do need more people, actually. Don't mind about the thingy. Just get him a big shelter, don't worry about it. Tavern. Monastery is pretty good, too. Minus 100 hostility, it can be quite nice. But I'll take the three global resolve, please and thank you. And it's nice and cheap to make. Does this run have no orders? That's correct. We're playing a no orders uh, session here, which is why we're on a lower difficulty for this one. This is the no orders makes it nigh impossible otherwise. Storm is here. Hostility 4 is definitely too much. 3 looks reasonable. That's minus 16, right? We should survive that. I have lots of clay to sell. Finally some money. Sell these two. Three humans for this job. We'll give three global resolve as long as it's got uh, three humans inside, or three people inside, and the humans themselves get plus five. We're getting close to being able to get reputation from the humans, who so far have contributed nothing to the settlement overall. But soon that too will end. Yes, every archaeological discovery at level 3 is worth 2 reputation. I believe that's correct. Every time you open or send an abandoned cache, hostility is lowered by 15 points. So now that's 25 hostility minus for each cache that we send. That's awesome. Speaking of, where's the trader? Six minutes, huh? I'm going to call you now. Although, it doesn't have tools, it looks like. Maybe not. Hmm. Gaining impatience is definitely questionable at this time. Need 14 planks, huh? Let's see. I have that much money? No, I really don't have that much money, actually. Okay, we'll wait. We'll wait. Though I don't like it. So if we favored humans, they would start generating rep. Currently, the harpies are doing okay at 0.24 per minute. That'll do for now. Um, what else can I do that will substantially change things? We have a good supply of all of our foods at the moment. Everyone has a house. Earths are leveled up. Hmm. Yeah, biscuits would be good. More human and harpy happiness. Uh, let's just get... How much wood do we even have? Lots of wood. Okay, let's just get more planks being made. For a minute here. Get resolve from water to speed things up a bit. Could definitely work in a couple of our buildings. fine. Game really needs a waffles update. Yeah, where's the waffles? 
We are going to get new food types, so hey, maybe. Just maybe. All right, what do we got here? Blight Rot Cauldron can be ignored, or we can cleanse it. We're going to do that, because that's another point of reputation. Storm Geyser, large sea marrow nodes, large mineral nodes. This is great. A cache that contains three ancient tablets. That's also great. Wow, actually, and a lot of other good things. Holy moly, that's good. It'll also give me the purging fire. So, we need a stonecutter's camp ASAP. Right here. And a warehouse. Also right here. And we need... To have... What? And workers available, too, also. Part seems harder. You're fired. Two will be fired momentarily. I guess that's not technically true. Hmm. Maybe just take the tool shop here. And then if we get a copper bar smelter, we can set up a copper mine. Seems like such a long-term play, though. I'm not convinced that is going to pan out. Well, are you not done? Oh, there they go. Okay. Good. That's a good read deal. Get double stone yield, too. It's pretty insane. Oven's done. Cap the pie at 100, because everybody loves pie. Also, do we want to maybe make incense? No way. Close to running out of flour as it is. Yeah, we could sell um, this warehouse. I think we will do that in a minute uh, and then just move it over here. Let's do that. She means we'll move this too. I'll put a third hearth over here. So that it's not so long a trek to take a break. Unfortunate souls that live over here. Year seven going into year eight pretty soon. Hoping we can do this in year eight or nine. We need longer, and we're looking at real trouble here.
Does anyone use wine? No, okay. Buying more coats is reasonable, though. I think I'm just going to do that with you. I'm going to summon another traitor. I guess at the start of the next year, huh? Trouble, trouble. is a mess. 19 people living there and 15 living here. Do I really not have enough people? I don't. Let's take newcomers then. That is fine. Let's use regular wood. There's no space for this stuff. Jeez. Uh. I delete the this. No. Hmm. Just pack this a bit more efficiently then. That's the spot. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I'll take it. If it works, it works. Okay, yeah, he leaves and the storm immediately happens. Fair enough. It's no big deal. I'm gathering the stone for this. Almost have enough blight rot to be a problem. Almost. Oh, hey. How long have you guys been finished here? Ah, uh, we're supposed to buy... Ah, uh, damn it. Oh, well, I can make 30 incense the brick oven. That's not hard. Just use some of our wood. Yeah, that's fine. And the Thunder Killaniwa. Nope. Although there are special storm specific events that can kill people. So, sort of. You can indirectly be killed by the storm. Uh, although, not directly by lightning or anything like that. Excavating this. Uh, and we should upgrade the archaeological building if we can. We can. So we get minus 10 hostility per ancient tablet we have, which will be quite a few. Gouts work faster? That's fine. That's fine. Okay, summon the traitor right now. Traitor, traitor, traitor. Hello, traitor. Tools. I would like to buy all of your tools. Let's unfavor harpies because now the humans are going to be in the positive range. All right, here we go. 30 tools from Farluff. And a minus 50 hostility perk for sale, too, but 
I don't think we take that. We definitely take 15 tools. Doesn't look like I can do more than that at the moment. I'd love the other 15, but it doesn't seem doable. We have tool shop, right? So bars are one-to-one -one with tools, actually, if you want. Makes copper bars a much cheaper way of getting tools. Although a much slower way as well. Like that part. Looking like it's going to be a year nine win. Nothing else to trade you? Not really. Okay, let's start on the medium abandoned cash, though. Those 15 tools get me 20 amber back. As well as 0.75 points and minus 25 hostility. Don't remember what the last tier of archaeological excavation requires. Oh well. Uh, and I said I wanted the new people, right? I did. Oh, four copper bars. Okay, cool. Now his six out of eight will have the remaining two in a moment for another plus two global resolve. Let's build that tool shop. Do you have planks, Farlove? Yes. Okay, give me 30 more planks, because I'm poor AF. And have some pack provisions. And some reeds. Keeping the tablets, because we get a bonus for those. Okay, we're still holding steady here. Steady enough, anyway. The excavation is going. Absolutely sure I can't have more stuff. Doesn't look like it. No, there's no stuff to have. We're too poor. Unfortunately. Okay, let's cleanse this with reeds and purging fire. There's another point. Butcher can make better skewers and jerky. Well, mostly better jerky. Manufactory can make training gear. Out of reeds. Reeds and stone, or reeds and metal mixed training gear. That's kind of cool. Got those. Yeah, we're going to win this. The question is, how many years will it take? And that is going to matter for the overworld map a fair bit. It's not going to be this year. I'm, I'm sure of that. So I'm pretty sure we get the win next year. With the current th rate at which things are going. Probably next year. Bonus porridge. I like it. Everyone's just slightly not happy enough. And somehow we've almost run out of pie. Well, tell me you've... Oh, cause, oh that's how. Because we've been making incense. Will that make sense? Please go back to pie making. Please and thank you. That's almost done. So that's another two points when we complete it. But uh, like I said, I forget what the third step requires. Almost out of skewers, too. 
Plenty of ingredients. Just need more lizards making skewers, I guess. Okay. That's right, we get an additional cornerstone choice. Two points. Oh, but it takes tools. That's right. It does take tools. Or parts. I can use my parts, actually. We can get rid of something that takes parts. We no longer need this much food production bonus, right? Actually, we can even lose a woodcutter's camp at this time. That's three parts. Let's lose this woodcutter's camp. Although what I should do... Is that only two parts? I was going to say, what I should do is cut into another dangerous glade here. All right, what else can I lose that takes parts? Yeah, because that's only three. A harvester's camp is almost done. Uh, not that almost done, though. Not the stonecutter's camp. The herbalist camp can go. We don't need this. You two are fired. You lot. Excavate. Not the tools. Hold on. The parts. Hmm. That sound. But yeah, let's make our blight post. Oh shoot, that takes a that takes parts though, right? Just one, just one part. New biggie. Oh yeah, we can make biscuits at the cookhouse. I actually kind of forgot about that. We've been able to do that this whole time. Apparently. We're actually surprisingly close to making the win happen this year, but I don't think it's going to. surprisingly close. I think we're only two points away. But two points is still a long way away. Maybe if I'd figured out how to get more tools. Maybe. Does that say 16 cysts? Okay. Please enable... Oh, we're almost out of fuel. Oh my. Hold on. Don't enable anything. How did that happen? I know how that happened. We've been burning it for jerky. That's how. All right, well, in that case, mine some freaking sea marrow so I don't die. Good luck to everyone. We don't need to work the ranch anymore. He's done with eggs. Two caches and a fuming machinery. Wait, how do I have 71 planks? You know what? I don't know that I want to know. Because you don't have a limit on planks. Oh, that's where my wood is gone. Well, that makes sense, too. Forgot about you. Hmm. the two points. Oh, look at that thing. That's cool. Badass. The Sea Serpent. Converted Glade Event. Counts as a Harmony Decoration. Gain 10 Sea Marrow for every 10 Copper Ore produced. Interesting. And we get a Cornerstone. 
which is just going to be 10 ember. Cool. No way to win during the storm, as far as I can tell. That's all right. You're nine. Three minutes? No. Now. Tools. I don't have tools. You're fired. Uh, we just need to be happy, though, right? I'm sure it's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Meaning 0.53 per minute. Yeah, I think that's good enough. Service goods, now just food. Just food. What's the thing that could make. Oh, yeah, manufacturing can make um, training gear. Let's get that online. Do I think this year nine is a bit long? It is a bit long, but given the modifiers we're playing with, it's reasonable. I'm not too upset because I think it was unrealistic to expect to do significantly better. And the rewards we get from this are pretty substantial. Use both. Don't use the metal though. Alright, we're almost there. Although I see the harpies have dipped out of favor, so that's okay. It's all on the humans then. Or if we can get lizards to 36 somehow. Uh, we should summon another traitor. He does it. I think the humans get us there anyway, though. GG. It's down on one seal fragment, too. That's all right. get a double royal resupply, although I want to check the area around us first. Oh yeah, look at this. The shelled mosquito nest. This is a really tough modifier to beat, though. Hmm. 
Uh, what's this? Obsidian Loremaster. Here we go. Okay, win a game after solving two forbidden events. If you succeed, all of our caravans will get 20 vegetables and 10 planks. There we go. That's the sort of stuff we want. And here we go. First Dawn Company Caravan. We did this last time as well. Pay 35 food stockpiles. I don't need to... Don't need to do a settlement for this one. We just get 30 grain and 15 pack of provisions, which is huge. Uh, at the start of each of our settlements for the rest of the cycle. So that's great. We're going to want to settle the Obsidian Loremaster next, I assume. Um, I could take bonus embarkation range if I want to look at another event or two. I don't think that really helps here, though. I think we should take just more seal fragments and maybe reserve embarkation points. Let's take one of each. One obsidian box, one supply package. Third mark is the Mosquito Nest. I think one of the updates they added, by the way, was unique art and sound for each of the events that you can encounter on the world map. This one can give a nice bonus, but the Roaming Swarm debuff is really hard. In order to get the uh, bonus here, what you have to, in order to help him, we have to settle on this tile and then win after completing two Forbidden Glades. Which won't be too hard. We're going to be doing that next, actually. I'll, I'll settle here. I really want the ten planks to start, as that is a huge bonus. However, a couple of things before we do that. One, we finally have enough resources to buy more upgrades here, getting one of these fundamental upgrades. We could get level three hearth. Ooh. Or we could get the starting ability for foxes or for harpies. I do like the one for harpies. 50 free coats. I don't use the neighborhood upgrade that much. I like going to level 2, but not so much level 3. Walking speed up is also a good base stat. And I really missed ha not having the Fox Geyser ability last time. Let's get the Fox starting ability. Amber, small farm, plantation. Let's take Amber Embarkation bonus and the 3% trader arrival speed. Five planks to start. Very good. Plus one trade route. It's also pretty good, but I'll take the five planks. Beaver starting ability, more trade offers. Ability to upgrade mines. Or the third caravan choice. No, I want the third caravan choice. Less cost on sacrificing. Discounted perks and blueprints from traders. Or the embarkation bonus for villagers. That's not too bad. I think the lower prices. 10% more Citadel resources. Interesting to get that in the Queen's Hand mode. Unlock Human Houses or unlock Lizard Houses. I really like Lizard Houses. They're pretty easy to make. Bricks and planks, I think. Not too many of each. Maybe it's bricks and fabric. Either way, it's, it's they're easy enough to make and I often have a few lizards. Forger's Camp, Pack of Provisions or Herbalist Camp. Give me the faster traders. Even cheaper prices. Newcomers bring more resources. Or traders have more stuff for sale. I, I wonder what more resources means. Give me that. Had a lot of picks here. Fox house. Human starting ability. Or harpy house. I like harpy house too. Lower prices, another faction. Faction doesn't matter here. Let's take another discount on the prices of perks. Traders. Okay, and that's all we can get for now. That was a lot of unlocks, a lot of little passive bonuses that are going to apply. Pretty big deal. Pretty big deal indeed.
So next up, we're settling here by the Obsidian Lore Master. However, oh, and the, ooh, whoa, look at that. And immediately rewarded for the um, third caravan unlock. Look at this, this is better than the others with the 310 tools. How many years was the last settlement? It was unfortunately nine years, which is, I guess, not too bad considering the advantages we got, but still a bit unfortunate. Yeah, 10 tools to start is awesome. I like that our choices are lizards, lizards and foxes, or foxes and lizards. I'm going to play on Prestige 4 again. And I am going to take a quick break, refill the legs, and stretch the water before we jump into our second archaeology game here. This time we have to solve two forbidden events to get the bonuses. All right, Twitch chat, I'll be back in a few. Don't go nowhere.
All right, Twitch chat, we are, in fact, now back. Going to be jumping into the Scarlet Orchard once more. This time with lizards and foxes, starting with 10 tools, as well as a decent amount of food. We got bonus wheat this time also. Playing on Prestige 4, so we'll have the longer storms. Not going to use any of our embarkation points. Let's see how this goes. We are being tasked with winning the game after solving two Forbidden Glade events. Our positive modifier, plus one to global resolve for every 30 units of water used in rain engines. That's interesting. We do have the starting ability of foxes, so we do know where the nearest geyser is at the start here. It's right here, a clearance water geyser in this dangerous glade, which we are going to be opening because it's right next to the Forbidden Glade, so we can go Dangerous Glade, Forbidden Glade. Uh, and then over here we can go Dangerous Glade, Forbidden Glade. Okay, those, danger those Forbidden Glades are very easy to get to. In fact, this one's so easy to get to, we could reasonably do it year two. Might do that. We want to pick an initial blueprint. Explorer's Lodge is cool. Butcher is really cool, because that's two-star skewers and jerky. Both lizards and foxes like skewers. So I'm very likely going to click on Butcher here. But we'll see what our first glade contains, I think. Do unspent embarkation points roll over? No, but reserve embarkation points do. They are a bit different. Isn't this the no meat biome? Is it? Yeah, there's eggs but no meat. Eggs have meat as a secondary though. And just like last time, we could get um We could get a ranch or we can use mushrooms for skewers. You don't actually have to make meat into skewers. You can have vegetarian skewers. And there are mushrooms on this biome, right? No, actually, wait. Huh. Hmm. Okay, noted. But yeah, ranch would make it easy. What we did last time on this biome was make ranch, and then we had unlimited skewers. Ooh, early peasant supplies I really like. Lots of free pack of provisions. Although we already do have some pack of provisions for free. Two amber for every 20 sea marrow isn't terrible either, but I'm, I'm sure peasant supplies will be really good this early. And we need a trading post. Since I already have pack of provisions, let's just get it in the center of town right away. Pet peeve is my woodcutter micro. I definitely could do a bit better with them at times. I admit I'm not tryharding the woodcutters that much. We already have two trade routes we can do. I can sell roots for five amber. Or roots for three amber. I'm going to go ahead and sell Fox Glen 14 of our roots. We are going to go a little bit low on food because of this, but getting 10 amber right away will level this up to level 2, meaning we'll get better deals from Fox Glen, in addition to, of course, having 10 amber to trade with.
Good to have orders back, but as usual, we'll, we'll wait on opening them for a bit till we are ready to open our first dangerous glade here. Oh yeah, we need some food generation. Might be able to favor the lizards and get a bit of resolve reputation here. Let's see if we can. A little bit. Point uh, oh four per minute. It's not nothing. It's only almost nothing. And now that we have all the core buildings up, we don't need to have anyone uh, jobless for a little while. We could even occasionally unman the ancient hearth and have them woodcut when the hearth doesn't need fuel restocking, but I'm far too lazy to do that. Huzla, thanks so much for the prime sub. Not an Against the Storm fan, but you need the ad-free VOD viewing? Well, enjoy it. Thanks for subbing, whatever your reasons are. Food is a little bit precarious. Just a bit. So our negatives are at the house. Favoring is unavailable. And then the pay oil one. And the literally drop dead one. Okay. Keep hostility low, as always. I'm not selling any more food. I'm sorry. I am definitely not selling all of my bricks for one amber either. What a scam. <laughs> Hello? That is not appropriate. I'm not even sure I want this geyser, I'm going to be honest, but... This glade is in our way, so we'll open it. Let's give them another minute or two. Okay, get a geyser pump. Uh, we know we can do that. This does require the second tier upgrade for it, I believe. Level one. No, no, that has to be the first upgrade. That's level one. Okay, yeah, so that's very, very free. We get two more people and five parts. I'm not going to say no. TikTok is also definitely going to happen, but I want the parts more than I want wildfire essence. Deliver five purging fire to get more parts, plus one oil production. Or deliver 15 copper ore and get plus two to copper bar production. Interesting. As well as six tools, which will be enough to open a medium cache. And we're already most of the way here because there's ore in the trees. So I'll take that one. Speedy real estate. Upgrade the hearth, which we've already done to get a bunch of stuff. 
for free. I'll take it. Good stuff. Oh, the update changed it to level 1 instead of level 2. I see. That's why I was remembering level 2, but reading level 1 and being a bit confused by that. 1-1-1. One, one, one. We've got harpies as the third species. I don't mind the harpies. Although the embarkation goods are way better here. Take three people. Although they do need a house. Forsaken Crypt. Lots of big stone nodes. Chat knows I love the big stone nodes. It's an enormous amount of food and a lot of stone resource and even more copper because we needed more copper, right? And a cache that we can send right away. And I, I think I will send that basically right away. What's the crypt need, though? Oh, well, it's got a new icon. Minus six to global resolve for every ten amber we have. Get coal, pie, and luxury goods. Or calm the spirits with advanced goods and money to get points. This one's a bit tough. So I think that means we're not opening another glade in the immediate future here. We want a uh, makeshift post. Actually, no, I want the crude workstation, not the post. We don't need the post yet. We do want to pick buildings now. So, how are we feeling about skewers? Wait. There's meat in the rocks, right? Yeah, we can use these insects and the roots to make skewers. I'm going skewers here. We also get oil production, which is pretty cool. Hiln is back. Hiln did okay work last time. I really appreciated the bonus fuel. What about tool shop? It seems to me that we're one upper bar producing building away from mass tool production, are we not? We have Copper Mine. Yeah, so we just complete this, and then we can make so many tools. I'm down. Let's take Tool Shop. I'm a believer here. Clothier is also... No, Clothier is terrible, because only Harpies like clothes. This is Naked Settlement. Okay, yeah, tool shop. Interesting. Most interesting. We have fertile ground, right? Yeah, we do. That would give me metal for tools. That said, are we sufficiently hungry that we need the food from the plantation? I don't think so. I think we can get away with a forester's hut here. Let's do it. Um, I might want the herbalist camp. I'm gonna see what's in the next dangerous glade before I pick this one, I think. Okay. So overall life seems to be going pretty well. Let's see, we can even make that forester's hut right away.
definitely set limits on the crude workstation this time. I learned my lesson. Never again. Never ever again. I want the warehouse here. Yes, farm fields. Yes, this is already the storm. So we still need to figure out how to deal with this. 30 planks is a big ask. Maybe the trader will help us out. We have, we have some money. All right, check the cornerstone first. Ooh, rebellious spirit. Prosperous settlement's interesting, too. Plus one global resolve every time we sell goods worth 50 amber. Rebellious Spirit gives us global resolve for every two impatience points. One of my favorites. Family gratitude can be quite good as well. Lots of water skins if you're keeping people happy. I really like family gratitude with uh, pickled goods in particular. I think I'll just take Rebellious Spirit, though. Can farm this by summoning traders on purpose, and then you have more happiness. Good for rushing quick wins, I find. All right, new trade routes. Plant fiber. I'm currently using that, although that's a really good plant fiber deal. Wait, Zorg, do you have fabric? No, just planks, but yes, planks. 30 planks would let me deal with the, the thing, right? And spending all of my money would be even better. Does Zorg have any of these? We even have enough money, right? Uh, wait, wine? Wine is an option, yeah? Yeah, wine is an option. How much for 30 wine? Six. Get 0.75 of a point versus 30 coal, 30 pie, and 10 pack of luxury goods. I think I'm going to opt for tear down here, but it's actually kind of close. What games am I playing off stream these days? I've been working my way through uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake. And I might be on to Rebirth after that. We'll see. It's the current distraction, anyway. Yeah, I don't mind getting 30 food, anyway. Okay. Take some wine, too. Thanks. Oh, I didn't notice I could sell grain. Hmm. Sell the grain for six. Got some other better uses, maybe. I'm not going to worry about it too much. Uh, what we are going to do is deal with a Forsaken Crypt now. Tear it down. Yeah, we have no amber, so... That'll be comparatively free. Uh, this is still getting built. Hello. Bricks, right? That's right. Okay. I see we have leather as well. In that case, do sell the plant fiber for five. Point oh seven per minute this year. Okay. Step in the right direction.
see what kind of position we're in, but my hope is that next year we can actually just go straight for the Forbidden Glade. The stonecutters will help a lot with the food situation. In fact, I might even go uh, double stonecutter camp here. Let's do that. Probably not too many people on the forester side, at least not initially, though. Really good because we're almost out of food here, too. I have no food to sell. Mostly waiting for newcomers. We're waiting for this to empty out. That'll free up some people. We're slowly working our way towards another rep here. You can already see that food is trending upwards thanks to the Stonecutters camp. Actually, that's something that the Trends panel can show us definitively in a minute. Um, is how much food do you get from one small food camp versus the large stonecutters camp in the same period of time. We'll take a look at that when the season changes, actually. That sounds kind of cool. Uh, they're not going to work anything yet. What cuts? Minutes. Although we have plenty of stuff, thankfully. What is the main use for resin? It is used in Glade events. It's also used... Um, in the making of... Actually, I can show you in the recipes panel. Recipes. Resin. As an ingredient, we can see that resin can make tea. Resin can make crystallized dew, along with rock or clay. Resin can make incense, along with fuel. And then apparently the fine smith can turn it into amber. I think that has to be cleansed from a corrupted building that you find. So it looks like the three uses are tea, crystallized dew, and incense. Mainly useful for making even more crystallized dew, I guess. Might want to disable that on the forester's hut here and just collect crystallized dew so that we can make tools. I think that's probably correct here. No resin for us. All right. Oh, yeah. And I wanted. To, uh, we ran out of um, food thing here. So let's look at the food trends. 
Although they're separate things, right? Yeah, I can't look at food overall. We got five from the trapper's camp twice. Two. <clears throat> And if we look at, what is it, Roots now? Two from Stonecutter's Camp. Yeah, I really wish I could look at food jumped together. But since I have to look at food ingredients individually, I really don't feel like I'm getting any useful information out of this thing. Hmm. But it busy. Oh wait, no. These two are supposed to be cleared here. Fools. We can make tons of bricks with all this. Yeah, food's going way up here. Although that's partially because of the pie. Delicious pie. Yeah, grouped fuel would be able to be would be helpful too, right? One copper bar? No, I'll take three people with two tools. That sounds great. Oh yeah, that reminds me. I'm supposed to open this cache. Let's do that now. Plus one resin production is kind of cute. Complete this. Give me a blueprint. Actually, I'm not even going to look at it yet. Don't complete that yet. Don't give me a blueprint. Do look at new orders, though. Complete trade routes with a multiplier of three or higher to get bonus brick production. Or reach standing level one with three settlements to get the 20 amber instead. I want the one that gives me money, not the one that costs me money. Hmm. <laughs> I like that. Cut into five glades, or cut into five glades, but do it fast. Get 20 reed and 20 clay for each discovered glade. I also like profit margin. Three trade routes worth seven amber each. That said, I'm really inclined to take the rewards that give me tools here. Regular into the wilds is pretty easy to do. We're going to cut into at least three more, because I've got two Forbidden Glades to cut into. Yeah, give me Into the Wilds. Easy peasy. There are no builders. I see. Then we have to fix that. We've even already got one out of three standing level here. Currently no trade routes we can do. We have 30 pack of provisions. That's almost too many. Almost. Do I find Hearth level 2 worth it? I do, yeah. Yeah, I do, actually. We should do that now, since we have exactly 14 people here. 10% production speed really adds up. We'll get another point momentarily. Oh yeah, and it's time to cut into this uh, for, uh, Dangerous Glade as well. Unless I wanted to do the Forbidden Glade now, which I didn't prep for. 
Hmm. Not prepped for it. Let's do the Dangerous Glade next. Any minute now. Okay, good. I was like, not the building I unlocked. Even better skewers. I meant to get those online a bit earlier anyway. More large rock nodes. Excellent news. And the Totem of Denial. grants a global resolve bonus. But I need 29 more wine. Hopefully the trader can hook us up with one of these things. And I'm willing to summon another trader too. We have um, rebellious spirit, so impatience is a good thing. So we'll probably do that. Please build that again. Okay, new year. Let's take our Metal Veins reward. Let's... We didn't find Herbalist Camp or anything. We might want to take the... Um, the Herb Garden then. I can already make oil at the Butcher, so I don't think I care about press. Yeah, let's grab Herb Garden. Land Hall. Beanery for porridge. Foxes love porridge. Don't have a renewable source of any of these, though. Mm, not sure about that one. Oh, grain delivery line. Hello. Or 10 amber every time a trader arrives. Another one that I love. Let's take bed and breakfast. Lots of trading, please. The Hilda has fabric and grain and pipes. But none of the things required for this event, right? Would very much like to perform the ritual here. Training gear, ale, wine, incense, scrolls, tea. No, she has none of that. So we'll summon another trader then. That's fine. Also just buy small farm, huh? We already took the uh, plantation thing though. Herb garden. This can make crystallized dew out of the resin. I guess I'll take Clan Hall. Oh, that's right. This is the 100% greater yield on camps. Oh, definitely I want Clan Hall. Are you kidding me? We just need to find 20 planks then. You got planks? Hi. No, you don't. I'll make them myself if I have to. But yeah, if we, if we double our camp yield, just like last game, then these large stone nodes are absurd. The good kind of absurd. So do I want anything you have? I guess we want to hook up the water geyser and upgrade that. It's not going to require her help, though. I have 65 coal. I don't think that makes it worth selling, though. Oh, these are worth selling, though. Heck yeah. 20 amber. Let's go. Oh, and there's more of them. Okay. Uh, and 15 more amber. Let's go. <laughs> Sell all of those packs of trade goods for 35 amber. You got it. You got it. Cool. All right. Um, right. I'll see you later, trader.
Guess we need some help at the crude workstation. Let's deconstruct the trapper's camp for now. Okay, looking fine. Curious how much uh, metal we're going to manage to plant in one year. Point one per minute. Planks. Well, that just makes sense. Also, I think uh, we automatically complete making connections with the trade routes we did. Unless one of these. No, this is Fox Glen, so we have to do one more. Gonna get Fox Glen to level 2. But level 2 wasn't the goal, so. Whoops. Oh yeah, trader. We need a new trader yesterday. Is our timer looking bad? Hello. Gonna need some help, Zorg. Oil? I don't think that's it either. I'll buy the half point of reputation though. That's pretty good. We'll check. Oil is not one of the things, right? No. Incense scrolls, tea, wine, ale. He's none of these. Zorg, you jerk. You failed us. You don't even have planks. I'm going to have to summon another trader after you leave. And I'm not going to be happy about it. <laughs> Way hey, hey, yourself. Stamping mill makes copper bars. That's the first thing we've seen. It takes five bars and one coal, or six ore, rather, and one coal. But it'll make um, lots of... We've got plus two, right? So it'll make four copper bars. So we have the we have the mass tool production method now. Let's Let's just do that. I'll take Stamping Mill. Even bad bar production is good enough here. Summoning the traders gets me more amber, too. As well as more impatience, so I think summoning traders here repeatedly is actually kind of good. Don't need to worry about the Blight Rot just yet, thankfully. A lot of metal, too. Let's also queue up Tool Shop. As we are on the verge of greatness here. Okay, one more time. The Hilda again. I don't think she'll have what we want, but we'll take a look. Uh, what's plan B for the Totem of Denial? Just burn it down and get some stuff? That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Perfectly acceptable plan B. And that's what we're going to do, because once again, the trader does not have the required goods, but does have planks. Oh, well. You win some, you lose some. And rich. This happen a lot? Makes sense. It is an outcome that can occur. I don't mind the, the free wood and stuff either. 
but converting it would have been strongly preferable. Okay, we don't need this many stone cutters anymore. Oh yeah, all those planks to let us make the clan hall too? Oh yeah, we want the clan hall, man. Land Hall is where it's at. Four new people, please. Put a hearth right over this once it's done. Let's make little shelters over here. Makes the lizards quite a bit happier. And now all of our camps have double yield. So we'll get two stone at a time from the stonecutters camps. That's going to make these large stone nodes very valuable. Uh, can we do stuff at the grill? Yes, we can. We certainly can. And this is a must-do job for lizards as they get 5 resolve and a 10% chance to double their yield. So stone cutters are fired. Lizards are over here now. Wait, this can make copper bars? I'm dumb. I took stamping meal for nothing. Dang it. <laughs> Alright, that's fine. We can have pottery now. Whoops. Uh, limit copper bars to 30, I guess. <laughs> All right, and what water does that take? Grill is green water, okay. I don't have any clearance water buildings, huh? I don't. Everyone's pissed, because I have one too many woodcutters. Okay, I have one woodcutter. It's not even working, really. Please prep the Forbidden Glade. I want to cut into a Forbidden Glade this year, so we're going to do some madness here. I can't handle the Forbidden Glade. Sounds like a problem for future me. So this is not acceptable. I need more woodcutters than this. I need the earth. I see. Tools are going to take planks or wood, metal. Also make pipes if we need more, or barrels. Planks will be the hard thing to come by, though, I'm sure. We can already make enough to open this cache. That's probably a good idea to get done sooner rather than later. Yeah, it is. Okay, let's work on this. Don't use my fuel, though. Thank you. Okay, no one is building. That's good. We should pick new orders now. More trade routes. Deal. Stormwater, not gonna happen. 50 tea in a bathhouse, probably also not gonna happen. Power of the Storm is super not happening, so I'll take healing. Oh, 
I don't have a stormwater geyser, right? Yeah, that was last game. Okay, yeah. Okay, Totem of Denial burnt down successfully. That's good. Oh, I put the grill in the wrong direction. That's embarrassing. Right, well, at least have some path to help you out. Quantity of trade routes is all that matters. All right, I'll sell one tool. Income tax. Are some of the buildings movable? Only some. Woodcutters, for example, can be moved. The grill, not so much. We actually got into that before the thing ended. Interesting. Supplies. Two large caches is excellent news. Large Seamero nodes is excellent news. Food, not really to be seen. I guess there's large root here. What is in these? This one has whatever. This one has so much metal inside it. Holy crap. 50 metal. Which would be more than enough to open up every other cache. But what about the Forbidden Glade event? Wildfire. We'll destroy all of our fuel. Yes, destroy all stored fuel. Catch it with water and a jug to get wildfire essence, longer fuel consumption, and some coal. Or spend two wildfire essence and lose fuel. That part's spooky to get Amber and Reputation. Five items every 15 seconds. Although with two foxes, it's really not that bad. Only three minutes and 32 seconds of work time. We're gonna return the child. Be free, my child. So one item every three seconds for uh, 200 seconds. So about 60 fuel. That's really not that bad. That's really not that bad. Hmm. I am a fan of generous rations, generally speaking, but the increased food consumption can really be a problem. Hmm. <laughs> Lumber tax is more straightforward, and one amber for every 50 wood. That's fine. Don't really like over-exploitation. You get a lot more charges on nodes, but you also gain way more hostility suddenly. Yeah, I've had generous rations really backfire on me, especially with a large settlement. I think I'll take lumber tax. This global resolve doesn't really help that much when my main goal is opening caches. Don't sell the food, at least not that much of it. Things going at the tool shop. We're making tools is what we're doing. Yeah, we need a hearth here. Raider's probably gonna wait a bit to show. OK. 
Okay, start working over here, I guess. Don't need to cut into that immediately, though. We have 20 tools, so I can open another cache now. How long until the trader is here? Three minutes. Okay, we have plenty of time. So just send one person on that job. Actually, I could open a large cache. Send two people on that job. This one. Actually, wait, they're done. Oh, they have no planks, huh? Actually, no, cancel this. Yeah, open a medium one. Getting overly ambitious here. Open this one. There we go. And you finished. Given this is my main food source, we're going to keep working the stone nodes. Not over here yet. We'll need more people. Newcomers in three minutes. Having three people working the clan hall is tough to justify sometimes, but it's super worth it just for the double yield out of our camps. At least I think so. To prevent people from eating basic bugs and stuff. I guess we need to enable that, huh? Nah, I can mess with that. The grill is doing fine, right? Yeah. Could use a third grill worker. Since the tool shop is preoccupied. I need more people. I need to stop working the forester's hut is what I need to do. There we go. I don't have any plank production. I really gotta fix that. Willing to take carpenter here just for planks. Do that. Of course, we need five planks to make it, but uh, that's a future us problem. New season, new trade routes. I'm not selling all my food. We've been over this. I will sell a minuscule amount of tools again. And I'll definitely sell plant fiber. There's the newcomers. Five people? No, six people. Six people. Six people helps a ton. should have been favoring someone. Trader's almost here and can ho hopefully assist with our problems. Yep, sure can. Could take plus one to crystallize dew production. That's interesting. Definitely just going to snag the planks of the Pershing fire. We're thinking about wildfire essence, but I think we're okay. I'm going to buy all your coal, actually. Don't want to run out. Okay. Thank you for the stuff. Good talking to you. So... The tool shop gets back to work. Currently missing bricks for this. You know what? I'm going to buy two more. Expensive, but we can do it. Yeah, 
Got loads of money after all. And even more coming in as we turn these caches into tools. Or turn these tools into open to caches. You get the idea. can also make tools, but I don't have a need for that at the moment. You are done making planks. Evil Merc, thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Yeah, you'll be working in a minute, don't worry. Uh, we need another shelter over here, presumably. Tea we can make. We have lots of metal, right? Don't have resin, though. Pigment we have. Yeah, let's grab an apothecary. It's a clearance water building, too. That could potentially become useful, but quite frankly, we, we don't really need that many more blueprints. We have the core fundamentals required, which is send all the caches. That's what's required. That's all that's required. that leveled up. Perfect. Perfect timing. Alright, we need more wood. That much more. I... No, I can't unfox either. Okay, good talk. Um, in that case, work at the tool shop. What about over here? I don't think we actually need the copper mine yet. Tools are coming in. Tools are coming in. Uh, we might want to consider the blight post. Let's get that up this year. Need one more brick that'll happen momentarily. Is there a reason to keep idle citizens? Idle citizens are builders, so anytime there's something to be built in the town, uh, you need idle people to do that. So I guess in a word, yes, there is a reason. Empathy events. Or rebuild or salvage three ruins. We have uh, one. I think this is easier to do. It gives me 12 tools as well. I think if we play our cards right, we can have a year five win here. Seems kind of insane, doesn't it? But well, you'd be surprised. Reefers.
What significance does the year have? The year affects the overworld, basically. Um, each settlement is sort of self-contained as a win or a loss, but then those wins and losses are interconnected by the overworld map. Little active trade route slot. I like that. Let's take the faster traders here at the trade route slot. Yeah, after we finish the settlement, I can show off the, the overworld map. But uh, it does matter quite a bit how how long, in terms of in-game years, it takes to complete the settlement. Is it time to get into this Forbidden Glade? Yeah, let's do it this year, because it's... If we're lucky we win this year. Although that would take quite a bit of luck, I think. That's right, each year also means more hostility. We get 45 points of hostility per year with each 100 points of hostility, meaning an additional penalty, basically. But a destroyed Rainpunk Foundry is going to blow up within an 18 field radius. We can salvage it, spawning blood flowers to get even more copper bar production or we can rebuild it. Wait, what? Oh no. Can produce parts at three stars. Can produce wildfire us. What is this thing? I don't think I've ever seen this. Three copper bars plus one coal equals one part. Two minutes. Wildfire Essence. 10 coal plus metal plus water equals Wildfire Essence. Cool. Um, but also spooky. Every 90 seconds we get a Blood Flower? I can't handle that. Blood Flowers eat our food. That's a problem. Although I could maybe just accept it exploding. No, I have to resolve it, right? Hmm. Spooky. The Hilda will have food. Just make more food. Easy peasy? Easy peasy. Ish. We wanted to break one of these open, right? Well, it gives me 35 barrels and more food. A lot of stone. I guess worse things have happened, right? Hmm. Oh, that's right. When it says destroys everything, it also means woods, right? So it opens this glade and this glade and this glade. And this glade. Yikes. Alright, so we want to salvage it then. We could collect sea marrow. We can get a lot of sea marrow too. Okay, let's start collecting sea marrow. As much as we can get. Deliver 20 tools, <laughs> or sell four ancient tablets, sell 30 pack of trade goods. Interesting. I think that one. I don't think I'll do either of those. A few things we want to do. We haven't done most of our quests either, so we have a lot of rep we can gain very quickly here. Newcomers are also almost here, which will also help. Okay, okay. What about the archaeological discovery? Oh, let's take food. I don't have food. 
could salvage it. Nah. I don't have food. Alright, that means we can ship this cash. Newcomers. With 14 bricks, I like it. Welcome, newcomers. to be flaming. Okay, how long is the work time with three foxen? Three minutes. So that will saw spawn two blood flowers. And if we can get the time below three minutes, it should spawn only one blood flower. Am I, am I correct? That sounds correct. Yeah, that sounds correct. Okay. Um, begin the process, I suppose. Okay, yeah, timer started. Scam, I'll buy that. That can get us some food. Speaking of food, I'm probably just gonna buy some, even though it's very expensive. Yeah, let's buy 80 food. Take your tools as well. Thanks. Okay, yeah. Send this to the Citadel also. Doesn't count as a completed event if we let it blow up. That's also correct. It will be exploded instead. I'll take press, in case I need more fuel or something. The lizards, they yearn for the mines. And then once the blood flower spawns, we also want to work on it immediately with a, a fox um, while the Seamero is burning. There it is. Two foxes, actually, because the bonus event speed will also apply to this and reduce the amount of food we have to lose. So keep sacking the Seamero. Looks like Seamero is going up even while sacrificing it, which is absurd because of how quick it's being generated over here. Check this out. Two. 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 Okay. Um, hopefully this is enough. I'm going to crank it up a little bit more. I just want, definitely want to make sure a second blood flower does not spawn. Okay, that was really not bad. Normally, this would spawn three or more blood flowers if you're playing on a high prestige. That was no problem. 
It was really not a problem at all. Tavern. I'm a certified tavern enjoyer. Although, is it appropriate to actually build here? A little unclear. I think I will. Tool shop is still making tools. I almost want to go double tool shop at this point. Let's do that. Stop burning this momentarily. As soon as the blood flower is done. Uh, food is going down. I, I need to keep this thing away. I'm coming up soon. Are we going to win this year? I really doubt it. Um, and it's, I think it's also appropriate to stop working the Forester's Hut once they gather up the last of this metal, because we have way too good of copper bar production at this point for it to matter anymore. Wow, 21 crystallized dew produced. Well, that's kind of good. I don't need more metal, right? Well, sort of. I think we're good, though. Looks like we're good. Harpies are not good. Harpies are not okay. don't know that I have an answer to this. I have very few positives, mainly. Concerning. Also concerning is my inability to do any of these trade routes. Hello? I think Gary can make some. We've got coal we could sacrifice, that's true. That would make things a lot easier. Yeah, that gets us through this storm. This is the last storm, realistically. Um, Let's see, we want to cut into glades. We want to cut into glades momentarily. Let's cut into this one to start. We can also just favor the harpies. Yeah, we can just do that. We'll be fine. It did not take long. Cool. Yeah, winning this year is not going to happen, but next year, easy. Easy win next year. Seeing fabric, oh, I see. Nothing too exciting. Six copper bars at a time, by the way. Uh, this will spike hostility, so don't do it yet. You're fired. My plank's back, thank you. Same with the blight post. I'm just going to take my resources back on that one.
cannot make fabric, and I have no fabric. What an interesting problem. Hmm. We're also out of food. That's not an interesting problem. That's just a problem. And a big one, too. Hmm. Also a slight problem, I'm out of caches that need to be opened? Is that true? Sure looks true. So it looks like our next job is cutting into more pieces of the forest. Cool. We'll take that. We'll move pretty fast here if we need to. Okay, deliver this. Braid routes. Can we upgrade our standing level? That's kind of important. Need to upgrade Stormhaven, which we could do by selling all of our coal. All right. Deal. Braid hub. Oh my. Um. Yeah. That makes this a lot easier. Okay, we basically immediately win when the trader arrives. In a minute and 46 seconds, and we'll summon another one after that if we need to. But yeah, we're, we're done. We're done now. It's all over. Uh, we also need more total trade routes. That's right. That's right. If we can get to 10. I doubt it, though. Enough ruins to rebuild. That's also fine. That looks like we're good. There was the cash. Here's the trader. So, every 60 worth of stuff, you say, is one point. Okay. Great. Great. Okay. <laughs> I'm winning? Seem to be winning. Uh, how long until that trade route finishes? Two minutes. Easy peasy. I have nothing more to trade him. I have more goods to sell, but uh, wait, can I? No, there's no... No option to give him the stuff. Somehow I have 200 food suddenly. Thank you. Good times. Very good times. Excellent. get not that much in terms of raw rewards, but back on the world map, we acquire for ourselves a permanent bonus for the rest of the cycle, 20 vegetables and 10 planks for every settlement from here on out. That's great news. Simply great news. So this is the overworld map. Uh, basically, the goal is to reach the seal here and break it within one Blightstorm cycle. There's a limited number of years, so that's where the overall number of years that it takes to win a settlement matters. You're at Blightwatch. It only took us six years, so it only counted six years away from the total timer. Got Fire Moths.
gain three wildfire. Oh yeah, we did this before. Three wildfire essence and 30 oil, but become cursed for your next game. Gaining plus 50 hostility times the difficulty multiplier. So 150 if you're playing on prestige. And a penalty for time spent sacrificing goods. This one's okay. Lose one villager, gain six parts is interesting. And what's this one? Trade food for machinery or artifacts. I think machinery are harder to come by, so I'll trade food for machinery. Yeah, we'll trade food for machinery. Features don't seem hostile. Interesting. But do we take the curse is the question. I don't know about that. I could if we played a veteran game. Over here. But that puts us further away from the hearth. I don't know if I like that. We want to be exploring in this direction. Hmm. We could take the scavenge option, gain six parts, but then not having villagers is kind of spooky. Lower start is pretty tough. I'd rather have the wildfire essence and the oil. I don't know. Actually don't know about that one. It seems like it should be okay to lose one villager, but when minus one villager is the difference between having eight people at the start and not having eight people, it's, it's a tough trade to make. Had we taken the plus two people earlier, I would be doing that trade, no, no question. Going from plus two to plus one, but going from zero to minus one, I don't think I can afford that. So I might ignore this. I don't know if I can handle the curse is the deal. Trying to do this game, which is intended to be my next one, with a huge penalty sounds really hard. I don't think we could handle this with 150 extra hostility. I've, I've played that before. It's tough. So I might just ignore the fire moths and settle here in the marshlands. In any event, that's all going to have to wait until next time we play against the Storm Twitch chat, because I am, alas, out of time to spend with you all today. Mm. We're going to be back in the uh, Spire Saddle tomorrow, playing some... Let's see, today's Friday, right? How the time flies. Yes, today's Friday. Tomorrow on Saturday, we're going to do a modded Spire Day, play some... Biome Spire, maybe some more Hermit. And I'm thinking some more Patrick's Parabox puzzle game tomorrow as well. I haven't done that in a while. So it should be a fun little Saturday stream. Uh, then coming up next week, we're going to have a weird schedule. I'm going to be off for part of the week. And I'm going to stream on Monday, which I never do, for a sponsored stream. Checking out, uh, I believe, Goblin Stone on Monday. We'll be off Tuesday and Wednesday, and then we're back on Thursday. At least that's the plan. Although, will we be back on Thursday? Seems ambitious. I'll see what I can do. Either way, folks, that's all from me. See you later, Lycud, Twitch Tarek, Shakti, Modus Pones, and everybody else. Till next time, my friends, stay cozy and have a good one. Toodaloo!